Ivy Trigon is back in Tampa, Florida. In our main event, Desmond Green faces Scott McHugh for the BYB middleweight belt. Plus, Tony Lopez looks to defend his heavyweight gold when he battles E.J. Linderman. Nine fights in all, including fan favorites Isaac Freeman and Cub Hawkins. Oh, what a left, what a left. Buckle up, it's time for BYB 13. And it's not a 5,000 cents. We make the weekend. Saturday night in Tampa, Florida, and I guarantee extreme, energized, enthusiastic competition inside the Trigon again tonight. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Colbert, joined by my partners, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinacci, Benny Ricardo. Not one, but two titles are on the line tonight. The middleweight belt, Desmond Green, Scott McHugh. Now, Desmond the Predator Green has had to wait a little while for his turn, but may turn out to be a blessing, Paulie. You know what? It is a blessing in some ways. You know, uh, last fight, he was ready to fight. He was ready to go. His opponent had some kind of accident in the locker room, and before you know, we lost our main event. You know, and he, you know, it was a really controversial situation. Green felt like, the, you know, Fryer didn't give his best efforts to come out and fight that night. But you know what? It may have been a blessing in disguise because Des Green told us that he had some issues with his hands, some little hairline fractures, and it allowed him to heal better. And believe me, he's going to need to be healed better tonight. He's got a tough opponent in front of him in Scott McHugh. Des Green has looked impressive thus far, but certainly tonight will be the test and his title fight. And, and both guys agree with that, Benny. And, and Scott McHugh, a three-time champion with our partners in the UK, BKB, a pure boxer who said, I'm going to give a bare knuckle lesson to the Predator tonight. And he just might. He may be the most talented bare knuckle fighter in the entire universe. And you folks at home can make it, I mean, you can judge for yourself. But here's a guy, it's a combination of everything, power, speed, and he's a great student of the game. He lost his very first fight as a pro. Came back off of that, never forgot that, so he said, no matter where I'm at, I always think I can improve. And he's shown that. But the most odd, the, the biggest oddity about him is, he enjoys getting hit in the face. Can you believe that? Uh -oh. He likes getting hit in the face. I, I, did you ever like getting hit in the face? I gotta, I'll tell you what, man, he says it. I'm not sure if I believe it. I'll tell you what, and sometimes when we were in the gym, some, we would say something like, oh, that guy doesn't like to get hit. None of us like to get hit. I mean, <laughs> it's just it bothers some of us more than it bothers others, you know? But this guy, maybe he's a little different. We're gonna find out about McHugh tonight. Well, we do have a unique matchup for the heavyweight championship, and the belt is already owned by Tony Lopez, who will have a competition in professional combat sports tonight, Benny, for the 115th time. Well, you talk about memory lane for Tony Tony Lopez. I mean, it is it goes longer than I-10, goes out into the ocean. <laughs> I mean, he may have fought John Sullivan for all we know. But you know, the thing you got to know about to uh, Tony Lopez, this guy knows how to fight. This guy doesn't waste energy. This guy doesn't waste movement. Every moment he is in control of. He knows exactly what to do. He has amazed me during his entire career career and I admire a guy that at the age of 49 he's still out there duking it out and he's got plenty to bring. He, he certainly does and you know way less experienced only the 50th combat competition <laughs> for his opponent DJ Linderman tonight looking for a little revenge from an MMA fight in which Tony won by head kick. No kicks tonight though. No kicks tonight and I'll tell you that's a really a good thing for Linderman because in the Trigon the Lopez is so big, he might be able to reach you with a head kick from anywhere inside the Trigon. You look at Lindemann, you know, white hair, white beard, you're like, oh, this guy's aging. But really, it's Lopez who's the aging guy, although Lindemann has plenty of experience. And in the last fight, he was really impressive against uh, Josh Burns. He really put together some nice combinations, nice punches, fought in a very intuitive manner, very smart, cerebral fight. I was honestly surprised at how well and how smartly he fought that fight. So. Well, he's telling us tonight that he's, he's felt the best he's ever felt. I mean, a lot of fighters say that, but he didn't say that before the last fight with Josh Burns. He said that yesterday when we were talking about tonight's fight. So I'm really curious about just how good Lindemann is going to show up tonight. So DJ has turned back the clock. Benny, I feel better than I did 20 minutes ago, so I've turned back the clock <laughs> as well. Go, Tell ready. us why the Trigon's so special. Well, first of all, it is the smallest fighting service in the entire universe. And folks, do not adjust your monitor. It is not missing one corner, one side. We've done that specific. Donna 5000 came up with that. 
So people will fight. And in the Try God, you better try or you're gone. That has now been officially trademarked. BennyRicardo.com, you better try or you are gone. So no pressure on you, Dave Ryan and Claudia Trejos, but Rhino, you better try to get things started in style. Well, you're not gone, but up to you, Rhino. Well, guys, thanks so much. Great to see Goldie and Polly and Benny here in Tampa, the brawl for it all. BYB 13, great crowd is gathering behind us, Dave and Claudia, and the rules of BYB Extreme are extreme. No question about that. We have four ounce gloves for the fighters, but of course, the knuckles have got to be exposed. That's the most important thing in BYB fighting. No three knockdown rule, a 10 point must scoring system. Punching in the clinch is allowed. You got to fight your way out. You can't stall inside the clinch, and a referee or doctor can stop the fight. It promotes instant confrontation and a lot of great fighting we'll see here tonight in Tampa. Speaking of which, Claudia, let's talk about the super featherweights for the women. Monica Medina head to head with. Jessica linked out. Medina fought really well in Biloxi against Patty Juarez, who's the champ at this level. But Patty's not available. So Jessica Link, last second, steps in. Three week notice. And let's uh, not forget that that was a contro controversial ending for that fight between uh, Patty and Monica. And because of her outstanding outing, Monica got a contract for multi fight deal. So that shows you the kind of fighter that she is. And we missed the opportunity to have the rematch against Patty because, like you mentioned, Patty was injured last minute and Jessica Link comes in last minute call. And she says, This is the way she always does it. She's ready to be ready. And this is the best way for her to always stay in shape, sharp, and ready to go. Light heavyweight fight. Let's talk about the guys now. We know that Garrett Call is going to go head to head with Cub Hawkins in this one. Mm -hmm. Cub Hawkins, an outstanding young talent, BYB Extreme, has signed him to a new contract. His future looks great. We met Garrett Call a moment ago, Claudia, when he came in with his team, his entourage. He's confident. Didn't have a nickname yet. He said, well, maybe I'll call myself Big G. It's a big moment for him tonight. Well, he did say this is his coming out party in BYB. This is the opportunity he has to show his skills in bare knuckle. His background is boxing, so right off the bat we understand striking is his forte. But he's facing somebody that our own matchmaker, Mel Valenzuela, has actually pointed out as a future star of bare knuckle, and that's in Cub Hawkins. And they both say, do not blink because we're in for a treat. We can't wait. PYB 13 here in Tampa. The State Fairgrounds is about to unfold and our first fight of the night. Jerome Hatch, Scott O'Shaughnessy, cruiserweight bound from beautiful Tampa, Florida is on the way. Stay with us. Check, 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 check. All right, I'm hearing you, but uh, I hear you, but I'm going to talk back, and I don't think you're hearing me on talk back.
to get things started inside the Trigon. Great to be back here at the Florida State Fairgrounds. Tampa, Florida, as promised, our first fight of the night, a cruiserweight battle. Holly, take us through the tail of the tip. Here we got the tail of the tip for our first match. Jerome Hatch and Scott O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy, just a little older, 37. Oh, Jerome Hatch, no spring chicken at 35 years old. Reached about the same, 72 for Hatch, 71 for O'Shaughnessy, and the one-inch height advantage as well for Hatch at 5'11 and 5'10. Should be a fun way to get things started, to officially get things started in style. Here is Big Mo. Tampa, can you hear me? No, no, Tampa, Florida, can you hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BYB 13 Live from the Florida State Fairgrounds and brought to you on the Stadium app and WatchStadium.com. We have nine bouts on the card this evening, culminating in our co- and main event championship contest. All bouts will be contested here in the mighty Trigon, the smallest surface in combat sports. We begin with our first fight of the night, five three-minute rounds in the cruiserweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the Trigon, Scott O'Shaughnessy. Spartan Scott O'Shaughnessy. Told us yesterday he has been training bare knuckle full time for a full two years now. He also, Benny, he knows how aggressive Jerome Hatch, his opponent, comes out. And he said, I need to stay disciplined. I need to weather the early storm. And what he's going to do right there, Mike, is he's going to fight inside. He says he's really adept at fighting inside, creating punching angles inside, which is that's what he plans to do with Jerome Hatch. He's going to have to pay the price, but that's his plan for now. First bare knuckle fight with three minute rounds for Scott O'Shaughnessy, his fourth bare knuckle battle as a professional. Father of three wonderful sons, said he is very involved and affectionate. Never lets time pass without telling his boys how much he loves them. Irish heritage, the mentality of a Spartan warrior, makes him the Spartan warrior. 37-year-old Scott O'Shaughnessy. You know, it's funny, Mike, you see him with the glasses on. He looked like a really studious looking guy, like the kind of guy you could pick on, you know? Yeah. How deceiving that is. The guy you would take his beer at the bar and then you'd be really, really sad that you did so. Yeah, fog up his glasses. <laughs> And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Here is Jerome Hatch. Magic Man. Yes, sir. Should we just enjoy the song? Oh, yeah, you know what? Can't be touched. We're enjoying Let's go. It's a lot to live up to if you're coming out, though. You got that right. Superman. Oh, yeah. But you know, with this guy, though, there's no calm about him. No. This guy's going to bring the violence. He is going to come right at him. And, boy, I tell you what, in his last performance, he just devastated his opponent. That was awesome to watch. It, it took one minute and nine seconds for him to finish Tegan Franco. Jerome the Hatchet Hatch coming in to the Hall of Famer. Can't be touched, Roy Jones Jr., the nine-time world champion. Superman, here's the deal. 
Scott O'Shaughnessy is going to try not to be touched early in this fight, Paulie. As I said, that's the game plan. Jerome looks to finish immediately. Yeah, he does, and he's a quick starter, and that's what we're, uh, that's what we're gonna expect to see as, as the fight starts out. You know, fights don't always last long in the Trigon, so it does benefit him and his style. Jerome, the hatchet patch. Ladies and gentlemen, this opening cruiserweight contest is set for five three-minute rounds and is brought to you by Pick Cherries. Our referee in charge with the Bill Rings, Bill Clancy. Let's meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 192 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of two victories versus one defeat. And he fights out of Slidell, Louisiana. Introducing Scott, the Irish Spartan O'Shaughnessy. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 194 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of one win, no defeats. And he fights out of Mont Bellevue, Texas. Here is Jerome. I'll call you out. I'll call you out. Mike, you good? Sir, you ready? Good, you ready? All right, gentlemen, come to scratch. Camera man, you gotta get out, buddy. You gotta get out. I ain't tight, bud. Oh, my command. Fight! Here we go! Scott O'Shaughnessy, Jerome Hatch. Hatch, black with red striped trunks, black and gold with the green trim. Good connection by Scott O'Shaughnessy. Like you said, he's gonna have to weather the storm. My God, this is some kind of a hurricane that's coming across here. It's like it's beating on that screen door. Both guys not gonna get a fast start here. Oh, big uppercut there by Hatch. It's quick. Ready to fight? Fight! We continue. Big uppercut just landed. And down goes O'Shaughnessy again. When he can't do poly, he's dropped that hand. He came in with that hand down. And that uppercut is right here. It is all over. Just like that. The hatchet is to it all. Big uppercuts. Big uppercuts. done by the great Tom Gervasi, our researcher, and I quote Jerome Hatch, my best punch is my uppercut. We saw it again tonight. Spot on, as usual, for Tom. You got that right. And of course, for Hatch, he knew it. Yep. Some of that action from that round, and there's that uppercut, and there's the first knockdown. Or is that the second one? I don't even know which one that is, but that's, that's the uppercut. We might be done in 20 minutes here, you know? Okay, here's those one. He took a clean right hand here first, and then oh, yeah. came back with an uppercut, and that, that is the one that put Shaughnessy down again, and that was the second knockdown. That's the one that ends it, because Shaughnessy's gonna get up kind of wobbly. So really, it was the result of uppercuts both times, yep. Polly and Benny, yep. and then just the follow-up, on the finish, and the fight is over just like that. Well, as, as a fighter, the worst thing you can do when you come into the opponent is to drop your head. Yeah. And he dropped the head, and that just gave him a target to go ahead and, and come in with that uppercut. And especially for Hatch, who loves the uppercuts. I mean, you're doing him the real favor. And if you notice the second knockdown, it was the right hand that landed first on top that sort of made O'Shaughnessy say, oh, let me get down and duck. And then he ducked right into the uppercut. So, because the second knockdown was a nice combination of double right hand, which was a right hand over the top on the cheek, and then an uppercut right underneath. As, ha as O'Shaughnessy dipped down, and that was all she wrote. Took him 69 seconds 
to earn a victory against Tegan Franco. We will get the official numbers in a moment from he, Big Mo, but I, I think gets, it was a little shorter than that. He gets right to it. He, he does indeed. You were right, Goldie. He doesn't waste any time. You got that right. To make it official, here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bill Clancy calls a stop to this contest at 55 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Jerome the Hatchet Hatch. 55 seconds is all it took for Jerome Hatch to move to 2-0 in his BYB career. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by our winner, still undefeated. You made quick work tonight, Jerome. Was that your plan to finish this one early? Yeah, I actually made it quicker than the last one, so it's always another uh, feather to keep in my hat. Yeah. Now at this point, the hatchet is undefeated in the Trigon. What's it like fighting in the Trigon versus any other type of fight you've done? You know, I, I love it. They can't run away. And everybody, when they get in, they start feeling my power. They always back up. I mean, he, he kept coming, but you see what happens when you keep coming. Now, you took a couple shots. You still look good. You finished that one early. Are you looking to get back in action soon? Hey, when y'all have me back, let's book it right away. I'm good, anytime. Well, I'm sure BYB will have you back again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Oh, we got some here. Hey, I wanna, I wanna thank everybody. I know people a lot around the country and a lot of y'all came out for me tonight that just you know, stumbled upon me being here. I appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate every one of you guys that actually tuned in to watch, have a lot of support around this country. And I, and I fucking love it, man. I appreciate you guys. That's for you, babe. She's at work, lady can't be here, so. Appreciate you guys. Rest in peace, Grandpa Steve. Love you. I'll throw it to you guys at the desk. Thank you. Great job by Jerome Hatch in sharing the evolution of BYB Extreme. And again, here's a guy, and, and I love with his fingers right there, because he says he likes to draw his opponents into what is a street fight. He did it again. And you know, the great thing about BYB, you get a guy like this, I mean, he's very confident. He thinks he can fight. There's no organizations in the background that prevents him from doing No, he comes here and he's ready to fight. He does it in 55 seconds tonight. Jerome the Hatchet Hatch is 2-0 inside the mighty Trigon, getting things started from Tampa in style.
Mississippi State Fairgrounds in Tampa. Our second fight on the way. Matthew Strickland, Art Parker, first of two heavyweight bouts from BYB 13. Wow, what a first fight that was. Jerome the Hatchet Hatch. And Claudia, our relationship with him goes back to BYB 11 in Miami when he demolished Tegan Franco. Also in the first round, does the same thing here tonight. Quick start, quick finish. There's a reason why we call him the Hatch. He brings that strong, tight, concise. He doesn't waste time. He doesn't waste energy because he understands he's here to make a show. And the show is to get things done quickly. And he is on his way to become, so he says, the face of BYB. No question about it. I mean, he's two for two. He's out there and he's knocking out opponents in very, very quick fashion in the first round. That's how you make an impact. That's how you get a big no social kidding. media following, and that is how you become a star in BYB. 55 seconds. That was a oh, very short man. day at the office. All right, so <laughs> Strickland Parker is the heavyweight bout. As we yes. said, I love the big dudes when they go head to head, and they start throwing punches inside the Trigon, the smallest fighting surface anywhere in combat sports. It's going to be fun to watch this first heavyweight bout. Very exciting. Strickland is actually doing his first appearance in BYB, and this is the kind of man that says, Fist first. That's all he's ever done. He wants to just make a living throwing punches. And he wants to make sure that people understand that combat sports saved his life. And there's a reason why he's here and he wants to make a name for himself in the Mighty Trigon. On the other hand, R. Parker, we know him. He's been around. He's a very well seasoned fighter. He's fought everybody and anybody. But I like this. He's a Filipino street karate martial artist which means he's really tough. We can't <laughs> wait to watch bout number two unfold here at BYB 13. Time now for Tale of the Tape. Our Tale of the Tape for this heavyweight matchup, Magic Man Art Parker and Matthew Strickland. Strickland, a little bit older, 39 years old. Parker has the age advantage, 29 years old. You'd figure he's a bit more in his prime, him and his Filipino street karate. Uh, we got a 75-inch reach for Parker. Strickland has a longer reach, 80 inches, but from the way he was talking yesterday, he seems like he's going to want to get in the trenches and go at it. He's taller as well at 6'5". He's going to have the reach advantage and the height advantage. Uh, only Parker is only 6 feet tall. Weight is about the same, 236 to 235. Big Bo. Tampa. Are you ready for the heavyweights? This heavyweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Art Parker. Twenty-five years in combat sports as a broadcaster and of it. As entertaining a fighter in view as we have ever experienced with what he says, the, the most handsome man in, in, in the world. Well, and you know, Paulie and I tried to get him to show us his Filipino street fighting master. He said, you know what? I'd end up having to kill you. <laughs> he never did show us what he does. But he says, you know, his hobby is staying beautiful. Yes. And he said, you know, all the women that he goes out with, that's a problem because they know he's going to be the most beautiful one there. Yeah, he, said, he actually said on his way to the arena, five women dropped dead gorgeous from, from, from his gorgeous look. They dropped that. <laughs> he's knocked down. You know, <laughs> Fates himself with a bit of a sex symbol. Yeah. Self-proclaimed sexiest man in bare knuckle. Tom Schultz, who was with Brandon Johnson, Boss Hog in London, a gentleman of uh, violence, good luck in his title fight coming up. He told me Art is probably the most technical heavyweight he's ever worked with. Fast, athletic, iron chin. The man can and will fight. He also said outside of fighting, he has an outrageous and wonderful personality. And he is right. And, and he's, he's grinding still, on his yeah, boxes. Look at him. I see you. <laughs> Help us, Bo. <laughs> He's fighting in boxer shorts. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Those are boxer shorts. I think. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome Matthew Strickland. Stretch Matthew Strickland used to weigh 400 pounds. He has competed at a weight as low as 186 pounds. 
Talking to him yesterday, and, and Rhino touched upon it for just a moment. Martial arts saved Matthew Strickland's life. He was in a slew of street fights, had trouble with addiction, had his time with the police, had his time incarcerated, became a Christian in 2017, and now the outlet is this. And so for those around the world who are struggling and, and can't get out of a, of a dark place, look at this man right here who did it. Once was 400 pounds, he's healthy, and he's gonna put on a show to the best of his ability to do. And I'm waiting for the Strickland diet. Anybody that can lose 400 pounds, from 400 pounds, get down to this way, that's a heck of an accomplishment. But this guy can fight, and the guy, he's a guy that enjoys the sport. And the funny part is, Arthur Markham is his idol. He idolized this guy, now he's gonna fight him. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he's, he's weighed a little less 50 pounds less than this for, for competition, so he's got his diet down pat for 400 pounds. And you're mentioning all the things that saved him. One of the things that saved him, of course, is the fact that he's also this weight because of the combat sports, you know? Because as you get older, you don't wanna have that unhealthy lifestyle. And surely, since he's living much healthier by doing this and keeping it here. And, and his nickname, Stretch, you would think being 6'5", no, he said, I have stretch marks from being 400 pounds, and so I'll go with it. I'm proud of it because, again, I'm long, I'm tall, I have stretchers from where I used to weigh just shy of 400 pounds. My training partners gave it to me. I'm sticking with it. I'm going to look for a win. Both men making their debut inside the Trigon. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this heavyweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds and is brought to you by FightDoctors.com. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Christopher Young. Let's meet the fighters first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet tall. He weighs in at 235 pounds. He holds a bare-knuckle record of one win, one loss, and he fights out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Here is Art the Dead Man Parker. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 234 pounds. He is making his bare knuckle boxing debut and he fights out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Introducing Matthew Stretch Strickland. Parker and Strickland. Heavyweight confrontation. On Benny's point, he said, I'm actually a fan. He's slick and has a chin made of granite. That was Strickland right. talking hey, about Art point. Parker. All right, Jimmy. Round one. Three. Here we go! Art Parker in the very distinguished outfit, black and gray trunks, little camo underneath. Black and red trunks, now white and black for Matthew Strickland. He said his hero's Muhammad Ali, but I fight nothing like him. <laughs> oh, big shot by Parker. And Strickland's already committing an error here. You can't go in the corner. You gotta, you can't, you gotta stay in the middle. Might be quick work for Art Parker. And that was a body shot. Seven. The fight continues for how long we will find out. Again, trying to trap his opponent in the corner. Good, dirty boxing by Art Parker. Hold up! Hold up! Damn! We're good. We're good. It is all over! Just like that! Strickland doing the grind dance, doing the grind dance, feeling it up. And you know, in boxing, Bobby, and Mike, you know, it's, that's the worst thing you can do is drop your 
But in, in uh, bare knuckle, it's even worse because you can do the tie bluff. Yeah. And if you sat right there, Parker right. just kind of held his neck and then ended up unloading on him. And you can't get away from it. You cannot go to the corner. You got to stay in the middle. That's the two mistakes. First, he went to the corner and didn't know his way out. So when he didn't know his way out, well, what would he do? He would put his head down and start flailing. And all Parker did, Parker was calmer in the fire. He just put the head, put, held him down like you're allowed to and then hit him with the other hand. Yeah, we're going to hit the shot, right? He's too high first. So he's too squared up behind. But all of a sudden, he's going to put his head down. Look, he's going to put his head down. And what does Parker do? He just holds his head down with the other hand. And he starts up with a beating up a guy. And you're going to see it again with the second knockdown. Same thing. Actually, there, he doesn't get to hold the line in the head. He's going down right away. And once again, here with the last one, turning his back, just didn't know a way out. And he just finally, I mean, he's basically folding there. He's not fighting back. He's putting his hands up and finally goes down. So I'm wondering, did we see any Filipino street karate in that fight? I, well, I, I, we did, I believe, because he does say, Paulie, he is the only grandmaster. He is from the Far East of Missouri. I mean, that was so dangerous. It might have been so fast that we didn't see it. You know what I mean? That's the thing about it. Yeah, he wouldn't show it to us. He said show. we would never appreciate it or be able to detect it. Or is the Filipino street karate the grind that he does at the end? Uh, we're going to have to ask him, and, or he'll just tell us. <laughs> Here's Big Motivation Official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Christopher Young calls his stop to this contest at 1 minute 21 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by TKO Art, the Dead Man Parker. He is a showman. There is no question about that. Victorious in his debut inside the Trigon, he will visit with Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, I am, I am joined by someone that I was really curious if I was going to interview after the victory, Art Parker, first and foremost. Art, congratulations. You are the self-proclaimed best-looking guy in bare knuckle fighting, and you basically went untouched tonight. How does it feel? First of all, he misquoted me. I'm not the best looking man in bare knuckle. I'm the sexiest man in bare knuckle. There's a distinct difference, okay? Um, but thank you very much. I know y'all are just too bashful to say that. I had a great time. Thank you, Matt, for coming out. I really appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm hoping to make BYB my home. Thank, thank you very much, Floyd, for having me out. I had a great time. Where's the beer? Can we get this man a beer, Tampa, please? Now, Art, you came out, you finished it quick. You clearly like fighting. Yeah. Do you want to get back in the Trigon quickly? And what was it like fighting in the Trigon? Well, quickly? Like, do we have someone else back there? Like, right now? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, no, I mean, I went back here as soon as possible. You know, I, I love fighting. It's the only way I get to do it and get paid and not go to jail. I'm down for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, you got a lot of family. Got some kids that you love painting your fingernails tonight. You got a lot of new fans in Tampa, does he not? Anything that you want to say to your support staff? Man, thank you everybody that had my back. It was a short notice fight. I really appreciate y'all having me. My, my people rallied together, really supported me for it in quick fashion. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all y'all for coming out. This is great. Y'all let us do this, and I really appreciate that. Without y'all, I'll be picking fights at 7 Eleven. No one can have that, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm sure you're going to be dancing the rest of the night. Get yourself a beer, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for your winner, Art the Dead Man, Parker. Art Parker, the sexiest man to shop at 7-Eleven, Benny. <laughs> There's that grind. <laughs> He's feeling it. And again, see the tie plum there like Benny was talking about and the up repeat uppercuts. That took the fight out of Strickland. And again, he just kept allowing himself to get backed up too easily. I mean, it was just not enough fight in Strickland in, in terms of wanting to hold the center of the Trigon. He just got backed up right away. And once he was backed up, he just didn't have enough, I don't know if he was experienced or he just wasn't skilled enough off, off the ropes to defend himself at all. If you look at his picture on Box Rec, you will see him with the Joe Thornton, Brent Burns, if you will, take out the beard, he said, Rhino, I got a big boy job, so I had to shave. So, <laughs> big boy with a big win. Back to you and Claudia. All right, Goldie, thanks. Wow. Two fights, Claudia, two quick results. Didn't get out of the first round for each. Jerome Hatch now, Art Parker was awesome. Well, he says he's the sexiest man alive. Maybe he's the best fighter around right now in the heavyweight division. He was tremendous tonight. So charismatic. 
still playing with the crowd, having some fun. Got the painted nails, got all the tattoos, got the dance moves. The one thing that we good did fighter. not talk about, not only is he a good fighter, he's a great showman, but he did not mention that he is willing to come in in a Speedo because he wants to show off his tattoos. Because like he says, he's got thighs to show off. So this is, again, a showman, not just in terms of boxing and fighting skills. He wants to make sure that everybody understands that he is the sexiest man in the world. How, how do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love the showmanship. Character, charisma. Yes. Makes it entertaining. It's fun for us to cover. But let's talk about those boxing skills. What do you see tonight from Art Parker? Well, uh, the fast, the speed, the fact that he was very composed, but he was always very comfortable in the area. But we have also have to remember that Strickland, perhaps, was not the type of competition that could put somebody like that on check and, and make sure that it was an opponent that would bring up his boxing skills to a higher level. So I want to see him with a, a better fighter, somebody that is actually going to be able to get himself out of the corners. And that's going to be the kind of heavyweight, like a Linderman, like a Dada, like, you know, Tony Lopez. So, yes, I just threw him in the mix. Yes, I just did. She did it. I did it. She did it. Two fights, two quick results here tonight in Tampa at BYB 13, the brawl for it all. Can't wait for the next fight. Garrett Call, Cobb Hawkins, head to head, light heavyweight from the state fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida.
In three weeks, BYB Extreme makes history, bringing bare knuckle fighting to the state of South Carolina for the very first time. Our main event, a battle of unbeatens for the interim BYB Super Middleweight Championship. Laurent T. Smash Nelson colliding with Sam, the caveman Liera. That's Friday, December 9th from the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Get your tickets at BYBTickets.com. All right, just a quick finish on the Art Parker in the mix, as Claudia talked about. Art Parker, 0-1 in pro kickboxing. He lost to Tony Lopez. We move forward to our tail of the tape for our next fight, Paulie. Cub Hawkins and Garrett Hall. Cub Hawkins has been one of the more interesting guys we've got here at BYB. Talented personality. He's got a lot going for him. 24 years old. We'll see how he does tonight against Garrett Cole, who's 28 years old and obviously at a prime age himself. Cole has a one-inch reach advantage of 72 inches and a three-inch height advantage at 5'11", but I remember Hawkins' last opponent also had the height advantage and didn't last long. We'll see how Cole fares tonight against Hawkins. 168 pounds for Cole, 171 pounds for Hawkins. All right, let's bring the fighters in. Here's Big Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, this light heavyweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the Trigon, Garrett Cole. says he's a great fighter, incredibly strong, a dangerous finisher. It will be an honor to share the Trigon with him. Paulie, he talked about this being a dream opportunity for him, Garrett, to showcase his grit. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I mean, I, I can see the grit in his personality yesterday. The way there was a, that, they had probably one of the better stare downs after, after they went in yesterday, face to face, nose to nose even. So Garrett Cole, you know, showing the personality and the grit outside the ring. If, he, if, if these guys want to get at each other as much as we saw yesterday at the Wayne, this will be a good fight. And he's a top five welterweight in the Rise of the Warrior and the Warriors. So this is a guy that's got some experience. And again, that confidence and stare down comes from past performances. So hopefully he'll show us that in the, in the Trigon tonight. Set to make his professional bare knuckle debut inside the mighty Trigon. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Here is Cub Hawkins. Cub the Savage Hawkins. For this camp, he trained in Glendale, Arizona at the lab run by the great John Crouch. Of course, the home of Smooth, Benson, Henderson, and many other great fighters. Did his training with Ezra Elliott. He's a soft-spoken, super polite kid. He, and he is a kid at 24, Benny. But man, he has all the elements and all the intangibles to be a mega superstar. And he threw us for a loop yesterday when all of a sudden he asked us, who's the most exciting fighter you like to see? And we all name names. He goes, wrong. None of you guys named me. I'm going to have a chip on my shoulder on that. I thought that was brilliant. Yes. The table got reversed on us. I thought he was saying Paulie other than himself, yeah. but obviously he was he was fishing for it and we missed. Yeah, we should. I think mean, Hawkins hasn't missed too much though. No, not at all. Not at all. Mel Valenzuela on Cub Hawkins. He is intelligent. He has the look. He has the presence. He knows about the throwback fighters, Benny, and of course, Mel Valenzuela, our Hall of Fame matchmaker. Absolutely, and this guy's a complete package. A very intelligent fighter, but he fights with that chip on his shoulder. He's got that great experience from wrestling, so he knows how to grind. He knows how to work every angle, and he says mentally, there does not exist a fighter in the world that's stronger than him mentally. I'd like to find the eighth grade teacher <laughs> who said he was mentally weak because he's not mentally weak or physically weak at all, present day. Here's Big Mo. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this light heavyweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds and is brought to you by Eight Man Strong. Our referee, when the bell rings, Frank Gentile. Let's meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 168 pounds. He is making his bare knuckle debut and he fights out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Introducing Garrett Cole. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 171 pounds. And he fights out of Madison, Wisconsin, by way of Chicago, Illinois. Here is the undefeated Cub, the Savage Hawkins. <laughs> Here we go, Cub Hawkins. White and black trunks, red wraps, blue wraps, and the black trunks. Hit early, knocked down early. Garrett Cole back up immediately. And look at the calm. Look at the calm that Cub Hawkins shows you. He's just waiting, relaxed. He's got those arms nice and relaxed, ready to be a fluid puncher. He waits for you in the, in the neutral corner like a lion, <laughs> waiting to be let out of the cage. Oh, big shot there by Garrett Cole. I'll tell you, Garrett Cole's tenacity yesterday at the Wayne showed, something, showed me something too. He's not going to go away quietly. Hawkins is going to do his best to get him out of there. Good that's job. what you got to do. You got to fight go. out of that corner. I was just going to say, Benny, good job getting out of the corner for Garrett Cole. And there's an example, of very effective tie blow. Yep. He used the right hand to just center that neck right there and give him the target to hit. So Garrett has fight in him, but Cub just seems to be better here. All right, let's go. With the better ability. And that's the thing about Cub. He's got fight in him as well as a ton of ability. That's the thing about Cub Hawkins. MMA experience for Hawkins. So that clinch, something he is used to utilizing very positively. Snuck in a couple of quick punches there. That a slip, not a knockdown. Oh, Cole's trying to use that uh, that Michigan style, you know, that uh, Mayweather and all those guys with that shoulder. Yeah. And you, you got to be quick. If you're going to do that, you better be quick. And not only a good body shot by Hawkins, and not only that, Benny, you also have to do it in a way where you can punch him back. Oh, he's in a good position. Oh, big shot. It is all over. Just like that double jab. The jab, Paulie. The finishing punch by Cub Hawkins. Oh, overall by Hawkins. You know, Garrett Cole, like I said, he had fight in him, but Hawkins has not only fight in him, but he has a ton of ability. He knows how to transition very well, defense to offense, knows how to use that, that tie plumb very well, and of course is accurate with his shots, and knows how to be simple when he needs to, as you mentioned, with the jam, with the jam on its own. That, that jam on its own was doing, does more damage with bare knuckle than it does in regular boxing, so he was using that, he was using other shots, he used the tie plumb, and you notice how it got Garrett Cole out of position defensively. Benny mentioned he was trying to use that Michigan roll type of stuff, but that Michigan roll type of stuff works only if you know how to stay in boxing in, in a fighting position where off of those rolls you're able to punch. Garrett Cole was getting himself all over the place and he wasn't able to punch off that of those moves. So Hawkins was taking advantage and hitting him more. There's a tie advantage of the time pull up there. That was the second knockdown. Yeah, if you're gonna use that shoulder roll, you better not take a picture. And right, that's yeah. what I did. He was taking a picture and that gave Cub Hawkins the chance to land that. Using that school up north roll. Yes. It says the Buckeye right there here. There you go. That's school up north. <laughs> but you know, the key on with a the wrestler, they're so calm. You know, when they wrestle, these guys are very calm guys because they got to keep those muscles super fluid, super loose, and you can just see that. I mean, the neutral corner, he looks like a lion when he was waiting to get yeah. out of the cage, just walking back and forth the neutral corner. I, th there's a presence about Cub Hogan when he's in China. He loves living in Madison, Wisconsin, but to make it official, he is not a Badgers fan. He is an Arkansas Razorback fan. His grandmother sent him a Razorback cat years and years ago, and that's his team. And he said he's a proud Chicagoan, too. He just moved to Wisconsin. Exactly. Likes the Bears, I think, right? That big does not pick the Badgers or the Packers. 
And he just defeated someone who was using that school up north style, so yeah. <laughs> He's a fellow Buckeye for me for now, at least for this moment. Like Seth Schaefer, our <laughs> champion. <laughs> And of course, and he's still going to school. He goes to Governor State University yep. pursuing his degree. So he's not only fighting, but also, you know, off, outside of the Trigon, he's trying to create a future for himself. And I think that's great. And he broke his right hand in the first round of an MMA fight 71 days ago. Still went on to win that fight, going the distance and win by unanimous decision. Showed no hesitation to utilize both hands and do quick work tonight. Here's Big Mo to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Gentile calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 37 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout coach, the Savage Hawkins! Winner by knockout once again in round number one, 2-0, and oh, Cub the Savage Hawkins. And he's entitled some overtail, overtime pay. This was 11 seconds longer than his last performance. That's it. That is a long time. For him. <laughs> Here's Big Mo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, joined by our winner and still undefeated Cub Hawkins. Cub, you told us yesterday you're here to make a statement. You not only want to be the best fighter, you also want to be the most entertaining fighter. Walk me, walk the fans through what you walked in here to do tonight. First off, I want to say thank you to everyone here. I'm from Chicago. You guys made me feel like I was home. So thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Mel, and of course, Dada. Uh, I got something to say, though. Uh, I don't know if I was going to fight or not. Uh, I, I seen a doctor before I came here, and uh, he said, Cub, I I'm, I'm nervous for your opponent. I'm scared for him. Uh, here's the x-ray. It shows that you got that dog in you. Jose Fernandez, you got the belt. I want that belt. You're the champion. No, I'm the champion. I, I want your heart. I want your soul. Praise be to Allah. A potential championship fight coming up for Cub Hawkins. Cub, coming from Madison, coming from Chicago. You brought some fans with you. You obviously thank the fans here. What makes you think that you can have that BYB strap around your waist very soon? I'm already the champion. I'll Everything, I, I've, I've already imagined me talking to you right now, months ago. I'm the most mentally tough fighter BYB has on the roster. No one is more mentally tough than me, and, and it comes from the city of Chicago where I come from. So, I'm the champion already, and I'm gonna take that belt, so that's me. Well, we look forward to seeing you in a championship bout here very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, still undefeated. Cub, the Savage, Hawkins! 24 years old, Cub Hawkins, it, and it was an x-ray, Benny, not an MRI that showed the dog in him. I mean, just a simple x-ray. <laughs> and this is a guy that prepares himself, boy. He does not leave anything that he doesn't cover before a fight. And you can see he comes prepared, and he comes ready to let it go. A dog and a goat, uh, the Savage and the goat, the champion, Jose Fernandez, Pauly, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, not only it'd be fun, but it'd be, you know, two fearless guys. Uh, like, Cub just showed me something, like I said before. I mean, Garrett, Garrett, his opponent, came with fight in him, and then Cub beat the fight completely out of him, you know? So, Fernandez is another guy, you know, he comes with fight. He's got the title to defend, but Cub wants it, and he's a young phenom. This guy's, this guy's going places. As I mentioned as he walked in, a rapidly rising star, he said he truly thinks there is not a man alive that is mentally stronger than he is. So far, hard to disagree.
Okay, so tell me if this has ever happened to you. You're listening to a podcast and you hear something funny or exciting that you want to share with a friend. So then you have to send them a link to the podcast, message them the timestamps, and then they have to scrub through to find that one little moment that you were trying to share. And of course they never do because that's too much work. But what if you could share moments from your favorite podcast instantly? Well, Pick Cherries is a free app where you can listen to all your favorite podcasts and share moments from them like never before. Let me show you how easy it is. So say you're listening to this podcast and you hear a moment that you want to share with your friend. All you need to do is press the Shazam like button at the bottom of your screen, and you'll be able to instantly trim a 60 second clip, or pick cherry, from the show. Then just press the share button, and you're good to go. Your friends will receive a link directly to that highlight. It's just as easy as sharing a TikTok. And get this, pick cherries keeps track of what you enjoy, and will generate a feed of other pick cherries that other listeners have created. So you're only ever a few swipes away from discovering your next favorite podcast. Pick cherries will revolutionize the way that you listen to, discover, and share podcasts. So download it today. BYB 13 for the Florida State Fairgrounds rolls on our next fight. Julio Tonori, welterweight against Toby Misek. That is going to be a great fight to watch, but Claudio Trejo, so far, three fights, three either TK or knockouts. None of them getting out of the first round. What's going on here? We're seeing some fast and furious action inside the Mighty Trigon. Look, it's instant confrontation, right? That's what BYB is all about. They haven't got past the first round, not even two minutes worth of not action. Even close. So, it, but it's intense, and that's what the mighty Trigon brings to the table. Uh, and it, it was interesting because Parker actually did a great job at maintaining everybody under control. And obviously, we saw that over and over, and it's only been three fights. And what's coming up is Julio Tanori, who is actually having his debut in BYB, actually pro debut, period, in combat sports. He's only 20 years old, but he comes from Sonora, Sonora, Mexico. Let me remind you, this is the kind of area in Mexican country that gives us so many boxing stars. Striking is what they know. So he promised that he will make a name for himself tonight. And he's under AJ Easley. This is a trainer of trainers. This is a man that actually has held somebody like Freeman, Isaac Freeman, by the hand. And Isaac Freeman gave us an outstanding performance not too many days ago. So we understand he's got the talent, he's got the power, he's got the skill, and he's got the corner. What else can we ask for? <laughs> Not much. Toby Misak, by the way, signed by BYB to an extensive contract. Now, he said in his last fight, it was a loss when he fought in BYB 9 that he was combining boxing and MMA, his prior combat sport experience. Now he's trained solely inside the Trigon. He's ready for this BYB experience. He thinks he'll be better than his last fight against Seth Schaefer. Well, Rhino, let's be clear. His only loss was against Schaefer, who's the champion right now. He's holding the belt. And let's not forget the kind of fight that he gave him. So that's why he got the contract. We understand that there's a time and a place, and we can actually allow talent to come to fruition. This might be the day that somebody like Toby, too quick Toby, gets a chance to show off his speed. We'll see. Time for the welterweights to go head-to-head -head inside the mighty Trigon. Maybe we'll get out of the first round. Could we have a <laughs> round two? We'll find out here in Tampa tonight. Time now for Tale of Tape. Rhino, Claudia, thank you very much. Our Tale of the Tape for Sonora, Mexico's Julio Tenori against Toby Too Quick Misek, born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii. Misek with a bigger experience, but he's also older, 34 years old. Tenori, only 20 years old, looking to make a name for himself against the big name of Misek. 71 inch reach for Tenori, 72 inches for Misek. Right now. Five foot eight, Misek stands at, while Tenori may have the one inch oh, reach yeah, disadvantage, but he has a one inch height advantage. Weight the I same at 146 pounds. Again. <laughs> Toby Misek, yes. Lost to Seth Schaefer. Schaefer's the champion. He also made it into round four against Seth Schaefer. He wants that rematch. First things first, the man standing in front of him, Big Bo, to bring him to the Trigon. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for five three minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Toby Misek.
J B J Penn. He has taken all of his time training for bare knuckle boxing. Now that he knows that this is the direction that his combat career is going. A lot of MMA experience. I called a couple of his fights in Bellator, Benny. I told both you guys, this kid is quick. And we saw that quickness early on against a champion in Seth Schaefer. But you know, Mike, what he didn't know how to do was manage the space inside the trigon. And you can have all the MMA experience you want, but you got to know how to fight in this trigon, especially how to manage that middle part. He said he had a he had broken nose two weeks before that fight, accidental headbutt. But you know, fighters, once they have a fight, they're going to fight. And they're not going to make any excuses about he went in there. And it didn't work out for him. But again, a champion that he fought, but again, he showed himself that he's got that quickness. Once he manages that space a little bit better, I think he's going to have some great results. He told me in that fight that he went into scrap mode too quickly, and I said, well, what Hawaiian does it go with that? <laughs> scrap mode, he said, no, Goldie, I, I forgot to utilize the clinch, and now I'm coming for redemption from that performance, but just to showcase my entire skill set, he is Toby Too Quick Misek. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome the Trigon, Julio Tapnori. Just 20 years old. Teammate Isaac, the Liberian Puma Freeman, who will fight here tonight inside the Trigon. He said, I've been doing this since I was a young kid. I thought it was wise to train in self-defense, and that is how I have become now a bare knuckle boxer at a very young age. I asked him, how do you negate quickness? And he said, Paulie, it's all about having his timing dialed in. Yeah, his timing dialed in. But you know what? I, I didn't quite see the sureness of him when he answered that question. I felt like he needed not only to be a little bit more sure of himself when it, when in response to a question like that, but also give a couple of different answers. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's show that you're mentally as prepared as you may have prepared physically. So I'm very, very curious to see how he shows up. And Polly and Mike, this is the evolution of uh, BYB and Bare Knuckle. This is a kid 20 years old. We just had a couple Hawkins, 24 years of yes. age. These guys are coming, and this is what they've seen it, and this is what they want to do, and they're starting doing this. So I think that's the evolution of Bare Knuckle. The word is out there. The basement of the Miset home in Hawaii now has a Trigon in it. He put the Trigon in the basement. That is where he does his training. Toby Misek here for the second time. Julio Tenori set to make his professional bare knuckle debut with the official introductions once again to Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this welterweight bare knuckle bout is scheduled for five three minute rounds and is brought to you by the Galloway Group. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Bobby Wambacher. Let's meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 146 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of no wins versus one loss. And he fights out of Hilo, Hawaii. Introducing Toby Too Quick Mise. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 146 pounds. He is making his bare knuckle debut and he fights out of Long Beach, California by way of Nakozari de Garcia, Sonora, Mexico. Introducing Julio. Misek Tenori, Bobby Wambacher, our referee. Toby, Julio. Let's go back. You ready? Fight! Here we go! Toby Misek, the southpaw in the blue wraps. Black trunks, black and gold trunks. 
for Sonora, Mexico's Julio Tenori. He is in the red wraps. And one of the things Misa's going to do in this fight is work on that clinch mode. Last time he said he kind of forgot that, and that's something he wants to do now when he gets close. Use that clinch and know how to create angles with that. He said, Goldie, I don't know why I, I forgot how <laughs> my, to utilize it, because as I mentioned, he's done a ton of MMA. He's, he's battled in all forms of combat, Paulie, and so he's not only utilized it, he's good at it, and that left hand was really good. Yeah. A lot of hyper, hyperactivity here in this fight so far early on by Tenori. He's, he's young, he's got that youth energy. Uh, so far, a couple of shots have landed from both guys, but still somebody, sh nobody has still taken full control of the fight. Nice jab by Tenori, though. He's got a nice jab, but you know what, Paulie? What he's got to do is step around. You can't jab and then go back, try to bring yeah. that backhand into it. Yeah, and with his head. Yeah, and that's the thing. He's, he steps around without punching, but then when he's punching, he steps straight back. You're right, man. Southpaw against the orthodox fighter, oh, nice and that left switch. lands again. By Misik, nice switch there, and lands on the name of the shot on the next switch. And going back to what you were saying about his fight with Schaefer, I tell you what, another thing, Schaefer has a way of making you forget you were going to do. Nice left hand yeah. by Misik, because Schaefer presses you so much and puts you under such duress and stress that it becomes hard to think when you're under that kind of pressure. So it's not, it's not just on Misik that he didn't maybe do what he wanted to do. It's also on Schaefer for putting him in a situation where you know he wasn't thinking good well. That, 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 that goes, that's the pressure of fighting a guy like Seth Schaefer. Nice combination there by Misik. Good start for Toby Too Quick Misek. Julio Tenori is game at 20 years old, making his professional debut. So he, he does a mouse up, there's a mouse on the top of the forehead, right side, Benny, of Toby Misek. I don't know if it was an accidental headbutt or if there was a good punch landed by his opponent. Yeah, it's a good, good technical fight by both guys, being for good speed. Both guys still wanting to fight, you see. Misik has that again, that youth energy. He wants to get, get in there and create space while Misik obviously knows that clinch work. And yeah, Tenori looking remembering to, it. And Tenori looking to use it as well. But you know, Tenori does not look like a 20 year old making his pro debut. This kid looks like an experienced bare knuckle fighter. Yeah, yeah, well, he's got some boxing experience from what he told us, right, guys? Yep, yep. Yeah, All boxing he said throughout his life, he is ready to make the debut, as he said, my debut in the most savage sport. The young man who was very shy and very polite that we spoke to in the fighter meetings yesterday is not the same young man we're seeing in the Trigon right here, right now. He has got some confidence in his skills. Oh, and we are going to see a round two, I believe. The shot by Tenori yes. with the right hand through the shorter shot. Misik was coming with his left hand, but Tenori's right hand was a little shorter and landed, and Misik meets his face collided with it. And they're going right to that above the right eye there. They're, they're going to go ahead and try to bring that swell down. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Different uh, cut men use different ways. You know, one of the I was talking to him before the fight, he says, you know, mainly what I want to do is I want to put that in swell. I don't like to use anything else on it, but mainly, you know, use that in swell, try to go ahead and bring that thing down. <laughs> 11 professional MMA victories, eight of those by knockout. Just fought MMA on June 11th. Fought back in March against the now champion Seth Schaefer. Tenori and Misek give us our first round two of the night. Blue wraps the South Paul, the Hawaiian Toby Misek, Julio Tenori in the red. And Tenori not afraid to work in the clinch with dirty boxing. You know, I, I scored the first fight. I don't know how you scored the ball, but I went ahead with that. I went with Misek for the first round. Yeah, it's close. I gave it to Tenori based on that right hand he landed at the end, but it was close. Misik with some nice clinch work there to start that round. They'll start this second round. In the Trigon, we have three-minute rounds. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. This is round two. Oh, good up. Walked into the right at the end of the first round. Walked right into the upper there. He's got to be careful walking into these shots. That was like a jackhammer, boy. I mean, it was straight at him. And, and Toby's muscles.
muscle memory took him right into MMA with the takedown. Toby's starting to swell up a little bit. Yeah, that right eye. Again, Tenori fighting the ball break that had much great effect. You get a clinch with it unexpected. I wouldn't expect Tenori to know how to use that clinch so well. Especially when he told his partner he was all about boxing. Yeah. He's trying to push him off. Don't miss it. Got a lot of fight in him as well. He's not trying to survive this. He's trying to fight his way out of it. As Big John McCarthy said, when we called his fight, Toby's in Hawaii. He said he's just your normal crazy Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, I'm daunted. He's swallowing up, but I'm daunted. But a good jab by Tenori. Tenori using that boxing style jab, that elastic style. And you know one of the things that Tenori's doing. One time he goes to the left. He throws that left hand. Just to set up that straight right hand. Toby's getting long with that left. That's going to knock some teeth out. Voltaire going in. Oh, Toby with some wrist shots. Man, you can hear that one. uppercut walk Misik walk right into it and that was sort of the beginning of the end here you know that big uppercut at the beginning of the round that was after Misik had started the round pretty well and this was the end and you know Polly when we interview these fighters you know you look at their eyes and stuff but Tenori had this cool calmness to him it was almost like he had ice in his veins you know what Betty I thought it was a little off because I'm like he's not giving us clear answers man but he clearly he's an instinctual fighter I don't think he can even explain what he's doing because I really really was looking for a more cerebral answer when we asked him that question yesterday and i was starting to have questions about why he couldn't give it a, a more clear answer but then this kid comes out fighting he's just a natural fighter he, 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 may, he may not even know how to explain it but he can fight and he talked about my style is smooth aggression yeah and that's exactly what he did i mean he fought like a boxer throwing that left to set up that straight right hand and the uppercut i mean a phenomenal a technical fight and I'll tell you what, Denori did it beautifully. Utilized what he calls a very high fight IQ to make it official. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bobby Wambacher calls a stop to this contest at 2 minutes 27 seconds of the second round, declaring your winner by knockout Julio Tanori. 20 years old. He wins in the second. At 227, defeating Toby Too Quick Misek. Very expressionless, much like our champion when he faced Toby earlier. And a great job done by what we may have just discovered. Our next diamond in the rough. Here is how he did it Julio Tenori. And here's a right hand in the first round. I mean, this is a good fight, good back and forth shot. And there's a nice counter uppercut by Misik. I mean, there, there was good, some good give and take, but Tenori ended up having the more consistent work. He also knew how to put his punches together better but with his boxing background. Misik, though, did try to throw some combinations, but it was Tenori who had the shorter combinations and, and the more substantiated combinations. And in the end, I think he threw that left hand from the southpaw stance, right? I mean, he ended up switching yep. stances and knocking out Misik with a straight left hand. And he did a beautiful job moving his head. Even though he was throwing all those punches, that head never stayed in one place. Moved that thing from side to side, and and I love the way he would double up with the left and then come straight with that right hand like a jackhammer. Yep, and that's those little boxing combinations, really, really disciplined. All right, the victor is with Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined 
made a debut, now undefeated, Julio Tenori. Julio, what was it like fighting in the Trigon? What was it like fighting with no gloves on? Uh, it was great, man, you know? Just came out here to try to put up a show, and we did, so. Now, Julio, don't worry. I'm a man of many words. You're a man of few words. You're a, <laughs> you're a quiet confidence, but when you fight, man, you know how to turn it on. Did you know that you were gonna come out here and really push the pace? Um, yeah, I mean, what else can we do, right? Just keep going. Now, an important component of BYB rule set is the clinch. I was listening to Goldie, Benny, and Paulie at the desk. They were talking about your clinch work. Was that something that you worked on coming into this fight? Oh, yeah, man. Um, my coach, fair. you know, my coaches, my team, we got ready, we were working. And that's one of the things we were going back to, um, to practice, you know? So I came out here and tried to use that at my advantage. So, yeah. Well, job well done. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, Julio Tanori. See, that's the soft-spoken young man that we had in the fighter interview yesterday. And now we see the confidence he has inside the Trigon. That diamond has been discovered. Mike, never fight a guy with few words. <laughs> Great point. <laughs> Great point. And Claudia Sonora was superior over Hilo in this matchup. Wow. Goalie, that was something. Seth Schaefer is the reigning welterweight champion in BYB, and he joins us. The belts are here. Seth is here. I tell you, Misek wanted to fight you, Seth, down the road for the BYB welterweight title. Flip script. Julio Tenori, only 20 years old, comes in and rocks Misek tonight. Are you surprised? I'm very surprised. Um, shocked. I did not expect that at all. I definitely gave it all to Toby. Um, I would go as far as to say he was going to finish um, red corner in like 30 seconds or less. Wow. Oh, okay. Ooh. W one factor that we did not add into your equation, the fact that um, Julio comes from a long line of fighters, heritage, heart, and AJ Easley. Corner is corner is corner. That's all I'm saying. So kudos to somebody as young as Tanori. We, we talked about his Mexican heritage, and I am going to revert to you because what did you say Julio Tanori has? Heart. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. I'm just going to. There's no doubt about that. Drop mic. This is a drop mic moment. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, let's talk about your goals. While we were watching that fight, you were so impressed with what Tanori did in the second round with his flurry to win. What's next for you? Multiple belts, right? Yes, sir. Um, you know, I want to follow in the footsteps of uh, my idols, my heroes, and uh, every every single one of them have always wanted a, a title in more than one division. So I can't really call myself great until I become at least a two division champion. So that's what I'm working on. Um, and uh, while I'm still young, decide to go down because it's easier to go down before you can go up. So. It's interesting because he wants to go down. So we're looking at 140, 135. 135. 135. So that's very demanding. Very few people can actually achieve that. Normally, when we're looking at multiple titles, we're going up in divisions as you grow up into your man body. Why? Um, like I said, um, I'm still young. Um, so if I'm going to do it, it's got to be now. Um, because I'm 29, I'll be 30 here soon. So if I wait any longer, it'll be harder. Like you said, it's hard. It is hard. It's very demanding. But uh, with this new new confidence of becoming uh, the first welterweight world champion, it's I got all the motivational world. So even though you shouldn't depend on it, you know, it should be just be riding off a of discipline. But it helps to have motivation. So what kind of things you're working on with your fight game right now to get ready for the next step? Um, I would say the, the key thing is to, uh, what's the, what's the saying, uh, out of sight, out of mind. So, uh, I'm, for this camp, to get my weight down, I'm going to PR, um, because I have a nice little spot set up to where it's very, uh, secluded and isolated, and I don't have to be distracted by 
you know, fast food. So that that's that's my biggest crutch. So I'm a foodie. So if I can keep the food out of my out of my face, I can I can make 135 healthy. So because if you if you follow my career, majority of my fights have been at 135. So it's nothing new. Um, I'm just trying to. Uh, get back to some roots, I guess, to, to put it, and, uh, you know, uh, finish finish what I started. And uh, that would be becoming a world champion at the weight class that I started fighting in. So I just want to finish what I started. Looking Seth forward Schaefer, to that. the welterweight champ, maybe more down the road. We wish you the best luck. Great to see you. Thanks for bringing the belts and hanging out. And now a Those are heavy, opponent. by the way. I know, they're incredible. <laughs> it's, it's great to have it so close. Much more coming up here from Tampa, the State Fairgrounds, and BYB 13, Brawl for it all. What a statement from Julio Tenori out of California. Big win in the second round. The middleweight title fight between Desmond Green and Scott McHugh. Heavyweight title fight, Tony Lopez, DJ Linkerman, Monica Medina, Jessica Link. But first, Holly, our tail of the tape in this super lightweight matchup, John the Baptist Birdsong against Christopher Gonzalez. Birdsong, 36 years old. Gonzalez, 32, with a 74-inch reach. He's got a two-inch reach advantage over Birdsong's 72 inches. But Gonzalez, five inches taller at 5'11". See how that plays out. Birdsong and Gonzalez have both had common opponents in Carlos Guerra. Both men looking for their first win inside the Trigon right here, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this super lightweight contest is our fifth bout of the evening scheduled for five three-minute rounds. 
Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome John Burnsaw. Jeet Kune Do, Taekwondo background for John the Baptist Birdsaw. Interesting that before his fight against Carlos Guerra back in September, he said he just had to slow everything down, his mind, his body, and, and, and let the fight come to him and not rush things. And then when we talked to him yesterday, guys, he goes, you know what, forget that. I was overthinking it. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm gonna utilize what's already in my DNA. And Paulie's got a big spot on his face, Benny. Change of mentality, buddy. That's gotta be. But you know, this is a very athletic guy. Very yes. athletic guy. Got great footwork and move around. Great uh, quickness of hands and all that stuff. And he says, my guy's gonna come to me. This, Gonzalez is gonna come to me. That's gonna help me tremendously to do, to do what you, you talked about, that change of mind. And he's gonna be aggressive. His goal is to show the world his IQ and his style to express his skill set freely. This is his second straight BYB fight at 140. Made his debut against Pablo Caballero at super featherweight. He weighed 132 and a half for that one. He said, that, that just gasped me, that killed me. Now he's comfortable and he is looking to finish Gonzalez and earn his first BYB win. Car wheels into the ring there, you saw that. Here's the athleticism. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome to the Trigon, Christopher Gonzalez. <laughs> he has one laid back. 32 year old who has a new look, a fresh haircut, a new outlook on things, he told us. Christopher Gonzalez. Greatest influences Mike Tyson Butterbean and Floyd Mayweather. He said in his fight against Jeff Chiffins that he felt Benny the Rep got too involved. He's saying, red, 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 red. And Christopher did, like fighters, as you know, Paulie should never do, but he let his guard down just for a half a second, obeying what he felt was the ref's command. Boom, Chiffins caught him with a body shot. That was about it. Exactly, that's what they say to you, protect yourself at all times. Yeah, don't be that. waiting for red or blue, and don't let the colors confuse you. That's right, that's right. So he, he talked about that, Paulie, but it wasn't like he was using that as an excuse. I think he's more so using that as motivation for tonight. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you, you gotta have a short memory in, in, in combat sports, whether you win or whether you lose. You don't wanna, if you win, you don't wanna be picking up on your, uh, your press clippings and getting cocky and, and you know, training less. And if you lose, obviously, you don't want it to affect your confidence going into the next fight. So whatever that, whatever thoughts he's having about that fight, whatever reasons he's giving himself that he came up short in that fight, he's got another guy in front of him and that's bird song. And he, the other thing he said was he's sharpening up his, his skill fighting in boxing shoes. Yes. He's not used to fighting in boxing shoes. He's used to street fighting. Yep. You know, when you get out there, you're barefoot, and uh, he said, that's what I am. I've got a black belt street fighting, and that's what he's gonna bring. And he has an acrobatic entrance into the Trigon as well. I don't know, either gentleman, it's Nadia Komenichi, but they <laughs> both have showcased their gymnastic skills. Now they are set to trade as Big Mo will officially introduce John Birdsong and Christopher Gonzalez. Ladies and gentlemen, this super lightweight contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds and is brought to you by Pink Cherries live on the stadium app. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Bill Clancy. Let's meet the fighters first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of zero wins versus two defeats. And he fights out of Detroit, Michigan. Here it is. John Birdsaw! And his opponent 
fighting out of the red corner. He stands 5 feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 139 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of zero victories versus two defeats. And he fights out of Dade City, Florida. Introducing Christopher Melaza. Go! Birdsong Gonzalez. Fight scheduled for five three minute rounds. Here we go! Big swing early by John Birdsong. He has the blue wraps. Got the red trunks going. Gonzalez in the red and blue with the red wraps. My time, my time, my time, my time. Stay right there. Yeah, they're going to look at that cut there below the eye. Interesting okay, the way Birdsong's using his legs. Okay, no, that thing. It's under the eye. I know it's okay. That's Open up real quick. But that's a good area. If you're going to have a cut, it better yeah. be below the eye. Absolutely. The battle continues. Birdsong showing that aggressiveness we talked about. Both men are. Bill Clancy's got to be careful where he steps. Southpaw, switch stance, Gonzalez says. He's been fighting Southpaw. Birdsong also switches his stance. Stop, that means stop. Understand? There you go. Very simple. Told you Bill Clancy was about to get angry. Mess around. Yep. <laughs> yep. They're getting these clinches and they're not, no, there's no room to work in there. No, stop. Guys are going flying, no, no, being down. tossed around. Fight. But you know, Paul, you know what would benefit Birdsong? Make like Pernell Whitaker. Get down low. This stop, guy's got a reach stop. advantage. Get underneath him. Time. Go over there. It's a lot of pushing going. You need time for the low blow? Yeah. Take your time. So Bill Clancy said that Gonzalez suffered low. low blow, so he said, take your time. Don't hit him low. Right so down. he can get up to five minutes here. Yes. You can take the full amount. You fight, I'll take care of it. You just take care of it. Clancy taking charge in the ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trigon. You got to with these guys. These guys are bring Ben the lot of there. Yeah, this is Bill Clancy, not Tom Clancy. Yeah, this is the unorthodox brawler, the black belt street fighter against the guy who said, forget it, I'm going to my Detroit DNA tonight. And I'm going to fight aggressively. I'm going to get my first win. Yeah, there's a lot of weird footing going on in there, too. Now, it doesn't help that Gondal's wearing sneakers, too, right? Well, it's, a, it's jogging shoes. It's actually jogging shoes. So he's he's stop, making his stop, way to box his down, shoes, down, down, down. I mean, you got to so like that. down, but Birdsong is wearing Yeezys. So neither so guy's wearing the right shoes. Others flailing. This is wild. Birdsong falling on his own. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. to see the replay of this because it's almost like simultaneously as he was throwing it i don't know if it's like his knee got in and hit him birdsong never looked comfortable no he was, he was falling on his own he was getting close to falling let's see here let's, let's see which replay this is let's see which there's a bunch of Weird stuff going on there. I don't, see, he didn't even get hit. He just, he, he just, he just, he, he, he just went down without even getting hit. Look, look, he's not even gonna get hit. He's just gonna go down. Watch, he, look, and that's it. He takes the full count. He didn't even take a shot there. I'm telling you, man, he, he, the fight was out of him even before that moment. There's sometimes you guys, there's something called staying power. I call it there, where your ability to stay in there and fight. At a certain point, some guys just don't have it. Like they just stay in there. And, and Birdsong really, in a lot of his fights, hasn't shown to have a, for a, a long time at all. Some guys have a, a medium range staying power, and some guys can stay in a tough fight the whole way. Birdsong just doesn't have any staying power at all. As soon as he gets a little tough, he's out of the fight. I mean, it's not the first time I've seen it. And this time, he didn't. Even get Hit. I mean, he got hit before, but that, that last knockdown wasn't even a knockdown. Yeah, to me, Birdsong looked like an unlatched screen door in a hurricane. Yeah, because he was this way, that way, and I mean, that yeah. thing was just flapping. And it didn't take long for it to break right down. <laughs> yeah.
I mean, and, and Gonzalez didn't do a lot, right? I mean, right. But it was enough to win. And, and Gonzalez kind of said that with his, you know, nonverbal in the corner. Hey, you know what? And his coach said, you got your first win. Take it, enjoy it, make it official for us, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bill Clancy calls a stop to this contest. At 1 minute, 33 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout, Christopher Melaza Gonzalez. Gonzalez earns his first victory. This time, he was able to stay on his game. He was able to do the things that he wanted to do. He knocked Chippins down in their fight that he ended up being defeated in with that body shot that we told the story, at least from his eyes before. Tonight, he just, I don't know how much fight was in him, like you said, Paulie, but he took the fight out of John Birdsong right away. He was excited. He had the jumping through the ropes, entrance in the ring. But yeah, like you said, he, he took the fight out of John Birdsong. And you know, he's a tall fighter and he fought tall. That's yeah. what he did really well. So he fought within himself, used that reach, and created problems for Birdsong. Christopher Gonzalez finishes John Birdsong. Still a gum, two title fights from beautiful Tampa, Florida. You are watching BYB Extreme on the stadium app. What are we doing here, guys? Let's play him. And the Klitschko brothers.
The middleweights are next. Isaac Freeman, Bobar, Konakov head-to-head after Christopher Gonzalez dominance in his fight in the super lightweight division. Wow, that was over quickly. Malasa, as he's known, right? In Spanish, yes. Molasses, he's sweet, it's <laughs> thick, and he really poured it on. An incredible win for Gonzalez. So he's got his first win at BYB Extreme after being knocked out twice the last time we saw him at Doral in Miami by Jeff Schiffens. But look better here. Let's move ahead now to these two fighters in Konakov and Freeman, and they're motivated by their homelands. Absolutely. Let's start uh, talking about Isaac Freeman. This is a gentleman that is looking to better the lives of his people in Liberia. This is a motivation that has actually taken him from Liberia to the U.S. and then become, uh, obviously, a pro at the sport. But Karakov is a little bit more, I'd say, recent, and it's a little bit more raw because he had to come to the States, even though it was his dream to come to the States and fight here in the States, following the likes of Vasily Lomachenko, the Klitschko brothers, and obviously Alexander Usyk. And we all know what kind of fighters that country gives us, and that's, we're talking about Ukraine. He had to flee the country because his city, Mariupol, was totally devastated. So him, his wife, and his kids had to leave. He had to leave one child behind. And he's fortunate to be here in the States, not in the circumstances that he left, but he is living the dream of being able to fight in America. It means so much for him to try to do well for everyone in Ukraine. And of course, his ex-wife and daughter still there thinking about them on a daily basis must be so incredibly emotionally challenging for Konakov. So we look ahead to Freeman now with ties to Liberia, another country that's had such civil strife and challenges of its own. He's thinking about his people back home as well. Absolutely. Whatever money he makes out of um, combat sports in general, he invests a great percentage out of that in order to make facilities to allow youth at risk to be able to practice sports, to get them off the streets, to give them an opportunity to rise to the occasion. Liberia obviously has lived major social turmoil and he wants to make a difference in his country. And he's doing it on the hands of AJ Easley. Does that name ring a bell? He is Julio trainer I, and they're actually working out together Freeman and Julio worked out together for this fight and easily made a great job or actually it was his mission to make sure that somebody like Isaac uh, Freeman with a whole lot of experience in combat sports could actually be the mentor for a young man like Julio at only 20 and we just saw the type of performance he gave us tremendous middleweights are next Freeman Konakov Let's go. Trigon side. Time now for the tail of the tape. Tail of the tape for this middleweight matchup. Magic Man, Konikov, the gladiator, Isaac Puma Freeman. 31 years old for Konikov, 33 for Freeman. Uh, one inch for each advantage for Konikov. We'll see if he knows how to use it. He's also got a one inch height advantage. Freeman weighed three pounds heavier at 156 pounds. The Konikov's 153 pounds. This is an interesting fight with both guys coming from political strife in their countries. Big Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening as we progress towards our main event is scheduled for five three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the Trigon, Bovar Konakov. Much like Alexander Usyk, Vasily Lomachenko, the Klitschko brothers, that man right there is a Ukrainian soldier. He stayed as long as he could to fight for his city, to fight for his nation. He told us there were 100,000 deaths that he had to witness almost firsthand. Moved to Sacramento, California, where he already had family established and he met one of the best in the business, one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time, the California kid, Uriah Faber. So I texted Uriah yesterday during the fighter meetings, and he said, Bovar, 
very humble guy. He works his butt off every day. He is super positive, especially for what he has experienced back home in the Ukraine. His bare knuckle fights in Russia went viral. Uriah said he came to the gym and he showed him some of the pictures. And I mean, I'm getting chills even thinking about it. We know what's been happening. It's, it, it's not right. What is good is that Bovar has most of his family safe. His dream is coming true in a, in a different way, Benny, but he's here and he's ready to fight. And you know, that's a very moving story. And you know, when you seek motivation, obviously he's got a lot of motivation coming from that experience. But you look at that build, look at that neck. That neck is spectacular. That's a hard man to knock out. So I'm really anxious to see what he brings. He says it's the best shot, uppercut, right hand. That's what we're gonna see. He is going to be cornered by Slava Borshev, UFC fighter who also trains at Team Alpha Male. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome Isaac Freeman. The storyline well established and done beautifully by both Dave and Claudia and the tie to AJ Easley. And now we we already knew what AJ was about. We already knew what Isaac was gonna bring. But look at the influence that he had on young 20-year-old Julio Tenori. Paulie, this is a guy in Puma who not only is trained with Serge Jimenez, who's 9-0-1-1, eight knockouts at the Hill Street Boxing Gym, but also back in the day with Freddie Roach. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's, he's actually, you know, we, we saw him in uh, earlier this year in Mississippi. He showed some really, really good boxing skills. Uh, clearly has been mismanaged as a boxer, and they messed up his record. But um, when you look at him and the way he knows how to fight inside the trigon, you can see the clear, clear boxing skills. He's a thinking cerebral fighter in there with some athletic ability as well. Uh, should be an interesting fight tonight and he just boxed uh, 101 days ago just about three and a half months ago back yeah and he, he stopped Randy Hederick uh, 115 of the second round and he said you know this is a guy does one hour running then he does two hours of versa climbing and he's been hitting the weight but he comes from a really good camp we settled with Tenori and all that stuff so this is a guy that is is getting better and better and better and he's now kind of getting away from the boxing and putting all the skill towards bare knuckle fighting. Uh, a man who has been in camp with Sugar Shane Mosley and in Bovar Kenikov, his opponent, a very motivated and disciplined fighter who is surrounding himself with some of the best in the United States as well, led by the California kid, Uriah Faber and Team Alpha Male in Sacramento. On paper, outstanding matchup. These men are ready to bring it and leave it all in the trigon. Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight bare knuckle bout is scheduled for five three minute rounds and is brought to you by FightDoctors.com live on the stadium app. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Christopher Young. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 153 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of two wins versus one loss. And he fights out of Mariupol City, Ukraine. Here is Bovar Gladian Kanaka. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 156 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of one win, no defeats. And he fights out of Los Angeles, California by way of Monrovia, Liberia. Here is Isaac Puma Freeman. The Liberian and the Ukrainian. Here we go! Bovar, Gladiator, Kenikov representing his home country on his shorts. Black trunks with a white stripe for 
Puma, Isaac Freeman and the Red Raps, Blue Raps for Bovar Kanikov. This is his fourth professional bare knuckle fight, but his first ever competition here in the United States. But the key for Freeman, he's going to have to be first. He's going to have to be first, and he's going to have to be right down the pipe. He already felt the shot right there. Don't back up. Yeah, simultaneous jab for Konikov to have landed more solid. A nice jab there by Freeman. See, Konikov trying to take control of the real estate in the Trigon, trying to back up Freeman, trying to make him run out of room so that the, he can then panic and make a mistake. Freeman initiating the clinch there. The Freeman's three bare knuckle fights, sorry guys, in Moscow, as Uriah Faber told me, they, they, they went viral. And that's what Bovar said, Benny coming in, that he feels the advantage is, is that Isaac is, is a boxer and a very good one, and he's making the transition. Bovar feels like he's already transitioned. Well, the Chibisaw fight was a fight of the year, so yeah. this is a guy that knows that out. Hope there by Bovar. And in addition to that, he was in a professional boxing tournament, Paulie. Bovar was where he fought three times in the same night. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've worked a few of those types of things in England where we did all the boxer tournaments. One yeah. boxer when we first came out, it was quarterfinals, semis, and finals, three rounds each. I think he did something similar over there in he, Ukraine. He did in uh, Kiev where, of course, Vitaly Klitschko has been the mayor since 2014. One of the things uh, that Freeman is doing, when he comes in, see the way he drops his head? That's tailor-made for that uppercut. That uh, he's gonna hit, Bovar's gonna end up landing. Watch what Bovar does in the clinches. He pushes Freeman back to the ropes. He's trying to consistently put that mental pressure on Freeman, and trying to make him feel like the walls are closing in so he can create mistakes. And it started to create mistakes. It's Freeman trying to start to make some panic moves. They're dipping for no reason. Bovar keeping cool and collected, starting to make him Freeman run out of room. And when he backs him up against that rope, that sets up his uppercut with it right in. And like you said, Benny, Freeman has to be first. He's got to feign and start shooting shots. He's got to keep keep, keep Bovar out of, out of position. Bovar starting to gain that ground and starting to take away the position in Freeman little by little. You see that sloppy jab by Freeman. He's he's got to stay calm. He's, Freeman has the ability to be in this fight, but he, he's got to have that belief. And Bovar's taking that belief away from him little by little. Freeman said he's been working his clinch game, basically getting out of bad clinch situations. He's in that corner right now, dangerous place to stand. Yeah, but he's ducking that head. I'm telling you, that is wide. It's perfect. It's suited for that uppercut. Okay, well, we're starting to look up for that uppercut right now. Couple body shots that Freeman looked to land late in the round. the ability to be in this fight, but does he believe it after that first round? Uh, you got it. Sympathy, sympathy. He's got a mouth by his right eye. Вообще, все отлично. Вообще, только за левую ножку все заходили. Очень хорошо сделал. Смотри, он стоит. Ничего, кроме правого сердца. Вот сбоку, когда вот так снова умираешь, идеально заходит. Только не бей вот сюда. Чуть почище. И, наверное, чуть-чуть побольше. Все, и назад не выходи. Только в сторону. В эту сторону. Вообще идеально разбирайся. И чуть-чуть, когда весь джеб готов получен. Мало качай. Ну, чуть там И джеб ему вообще не спадает. Можно много джебов кидать. Главное, главное просто. Well, we've done a ton with the gloves on this calendar year, and, and I just think of Usyk and Bivol and, and, and all the great Eastern European fighters, and, and Bovar, he, ha he has that same look, that same mentality, and, and that same grit to him and determination. They're very fundamentally sound, and they're based, they're, they're principled based on those fundamentals, and of course, they're also fundamentally sound with the mental strength. They don't they don't fold, they don't, they don't break, and so you can see Bovar, he's trying to have that mental, put that mental stress on, on Freeman. And see Freeman Freeman using his athletic ability now. This is where, what Benny was talking about. His first oh, nice shot, good right hand by Freeman. But again, you see Bolar, he's not gonna go anywhere. He's gonna keep trying to take that position. So, nice hook by Freeman. You see again, Freeman has the ability to be in this fight, but will Bolar convince him that he doesn't belong in there? And that's up to Freeman to be able to match the mental side of it with Bolar, because that's where the Eastern Europeans have that domination in, in combat sports. Their mental side is so strong. Good shots by Kanikov. Freeman's landing some good shots this round. He, he gonna, has, yeah. He's going to be able to stay consistent. And he's keeping his head up. He's not ducking his head now when he comes in. He's keeping that head up so he's seeing the shots and then setting himself up. And the key is not to be backing up. 
like what I'm seeing out of both guys, though. Bovar hasn't lost that belief, and Freeman is going to decide, you know what, if I'm going to get beat tonight, I'm going to fight my way out of it. And he's got Bovar bleeding all over the place now. Well, we talked about the jab and, and the damage a jab causes, especially in bare knuckle, and especially for the superficial cut. Mm -hmm. And Isaac did tell us in the fighter meetings he's trying to better his overall skill set. Oh, nice uppercut. Nice counter uppercut by Freeman. Good head movement, good avoidance by Puma, Isaac Freeman. And this is when they get up close, that's when Bovar's very dangerous. Because he's good at creating those punching angles for that uppercut. Freeman also physically imposing himself a little bit more now in the clinches. He's not allowing Bovar to try to push him back to the ropes. Trying to match physical with physical, but you see Bovar again trying to overwhelm him. And you see right there, Freeman sees the opportunity to attack the body, and he did it. When he got up close, he didn't waste that space. He started to go to work on Bovar's body. Counter by Tanikov. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah, the upper caught it, Paul. Yeah, but he came back with his own left hook. Again, that's the mental side. They don't break these kind of guys. You know, Freeman has to be able to match the mental with him. Freeman has the physical ability to be in this fight, but again, it's the mental. Can, is he going to match the mental with Bovar? Not just Bovar present day, but Bovar what has been happening back home present day. Started training boxing a decade ago. It's jammed by Freeman and both guys now. This is a good skill fight. Both guys really know how to fight. Swing and a miss by Freeman. Attempted the counter up right there. And you know, the, both of them are doing a great job. They get hit, and right away, what they do is they get back. Yeah, and that's because they're defensively keeping their position when they slip. You see a lot of guys, especially if they're an upper, they make a slip a shot, they're all over the place. They're not in position to fire back. Both of these guys do a really good job of keeping fundamentals so that when they make those slips and slides defensively, they're in position to be able to punch back. So good skill, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. Is that uppercut, but countered by the left hook. Both shots landed. But again, it's an example of you're not just going to keep these, these guys off of each other with just a simple shot. These guys are here to fight. And I like the way Freeman rebounded in that second round. You know, Bovar stayed with that consistency, but Freeman had a, a better body language in that second round from what I saw in the first round, where he looked like he was kind of taken aback by Bovar's command of the, of the trigon. And Freeman did a great job of rolling with those punches. That's what yep. he does. When he gets up close, he feels it, and then he rolls it, and then he creates his own punching angles that way. And he started to get a timing on Bovar a little bit. You know? Started to really land a couple of those good counters. Oh, man, I get, again, off of those defensive moves, he was landing some shots. He, he, he was able to cut Bovar a little bit more as Bovar's bleeding a little bit more. Good fight, good fight fall by both guys. So far delivering what we had hoped to see when we broke down this, this matchup on paper. And switching to the southpaw stance now is Puma Isaac Freeman. Connecting is Bovar Kanikov. Yeah, that, that shot made him turn back to right-handed. Yep. They get slower. That's what I think. They get lethargic when they switch to the southpaw. They're not as quick, and what he's trying to do is get that backhand into it. And I'm, and I'm also curious, because again, I broke my right hand in bare knuckle. I'm curious to see if, if maybe Freeman's right hand is bothering him, and so he, he feels like he'll be better off fighting out of the southpaw stance and using that cross. Well, he threw the right hand there. He threw an uppercut. Third round, first time tonight. And a good battle between Kanikov and Freeman. And you know, Freeman talked about the weight workout he's done. I think that's when Big Simmons really helped him. Because now when he gets inside that clinch, boy, he's got some, he's got some power. And, and Bovar's a strong, strong fighter. Yeah, yeah, and Freeman has been willing to, you know, engage in that physical work on, uh, and push him back in this fight. Although now Bovar's starting to Again, close that range, and again, take away the real estate of Freeman. Good combination by Bovar. Little body head there, Paulie. Nice little hooks to the body by Freeman as well. Good back and forth action. Again, you can see Bovar trying to keep that stress. He's got, by continuing to close the gap and continuing to push him back, he's causing that mental stress. So it's, it's, Freeman, it's Freeman who's staying calm, looking to time those shots. But again, it can still be stressful because a guy like Bovar, now he puts you in this situation, he won't get off you even if you hit him with some shots, which Freeman is doing. Yeah, Freeman's doing a good job.
good job. He's fighting out of the corners, and he's trying to go ahead and set up that right hand. But again, it could create panic if you're the one always getting backed up to places where there's no room. It's one thing to be backed up if you find the room. It's another place thing to be backed up in places where you find no room, and you've got to constantly be able to fight when you don't want to fight. Because one thing about uh, 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 being a oh, nice right hand there by Freeman on the counters, he's slipping well in there. Tell you, Bob has got some good numbers he's throwing, but Freeman's landing some nice cleaner shots on the inside. But again, it's when you're forced to fight when you don't want to fight. One thing about being comfortable in a fight is dictating when you want to fight and when you don't fight. And and, and Bovar right now is doing that. He's the one who's dictating when it's time to fight and when it's time to rest. And for Freeman, that causes that mental stress. He's reacted well so far, but it's a lot of mental stress he's dealing with. And Bovar trying to get physical in there with the shoulder. Somebody's mouthpiece is out. Bovar still walking down. What a fight. 20 seconds on the clock, round number three. Ultra aggressive matchup between Kanikov and Freeman. I'll tell you, man, sometimes you watch some of these fights, and then you watch another fight, and you wonder if you're watching the same sport. Like, you watch this fight, and then you watch the fight we just watched before with Bird Song and, and Gonzalez. It's like we're watching two different kinds of sports. I mean, this, this is so much of a higher level for being fought by both of these guys. Look at me, look at me. You know, Mike, these guys understand angles. They start, and they understand angles to show the world all the little things that you do that you don't think about, and they do this so well. You see that replay, the little shoulder shrug there by, uh, by Conocoff. This is when conditioning comes into play here now, because they set up, they set up over the pace of the fight. Now the conditioning is going to come in. Bovar, Gladiator, Kenikov. Round number four of this middleweight matchup. Isaac Freeman, 1-0 inside the Trigon. Trigon debut for Bovar. He is 2-1 in his professional bare knuckle career. And that's gonna work well for Freeman. You notice that he came in with that, that uppercut below with the left hand as soon as he felt Bovar come in. Yeah, man, yeah, look at the positioning on both guys. You know, Freeman's being backed up, keeping position. Bobar keeping that position as he's, he's putting that pressure. Careful pressure. Good slip by Freeman. Really good skill fight. Nice double jab there by Freeman. But again, Bobar's right back on top of him with his own jab. Look at the counters to the counters. Even though they don't land, look at how the good, good of a position both guys are keeping on the defensive front. Yeah, they're able to throw shoot. another punch. Yeah, but they're able to, and they're able to shoot back because of that good, good defensive position. Both guys, even if it doesn't land, the fact that they're even able to get it off. Two minutes on the clock, round number four. Boy, and these guys are in great physical shape. No you can question. Tell they could keep this pace, and they, they're going to do it. Their minds are totally clear for the strategy they're trying to implement. Nice creative combination there by Freeman with a hook to the body and hook to the head. Freeman, his three professional boxing wins were all by knockout. Oh, good, good combination there. Fighting back, but good pressure there by Bovar. Well, Bovar's bringing the fight. Bringing yes. the fight, but I tell you what, Freeman's done a good job of rolling with him, countering. Yeah, he's trying to break Freeman mentally, but he's taking some punishment in order to be able to try to do this. He's landing his own shots, obviously. Both guys have done some good damage to each other. But there's a price to pay because Freeman won't just break on pressure. You're going to have to pressure him and also land those shots if you're playing on breaking him. We're getting what we had hoped for and a little bit more, I would say, from Kennikoff and Freeman. Final minute of round four. This one's scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Very close fight. The aggressor has been Kennikoff, but much to Paulie and Benny's point, Freeman has had some spectacular moments as well. Not there, I'd say Freeman's probably landing the more shots, but both shots, both guys are landing. But good, good, good uppercut there by Konikov on the inside. And you, you can 
can tell Katakos' strategy, too, is also to try to go and put his weight on Freeman, trying to tire him out. Yeah, and he was also a good shot there by Katakos. Katakos starting to land more now this round, though. He's starting to, he's starting to see some physical wear and tear on, on Freeman, and he's starting to slow down, and that will affect his reflexes. Freeman's a very much a reflex fighter. That was, that was probably the best combination of the fight that Bovar landed a moment ago, Pauly. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna head to the fifth and final round. Some of that action from that last round. Nice jab to the stomach, hook to the head there. Freeman has those creative combinations, uses that athleticism well. Comes back with his only left hook again there. Bovar undaunted, puts Freeman into that defensive positioning, and then nice, brings him up with that right uppercut, but then lands the hooks. The Follow-up combination, Freeman throws back some right hands as well. But again, to the judges, how does it look when the pressure and the stress is putting Freeman on against those ropes? A lot of times it's hard to see what's landing, what's not landing clean, but it's the stress of being up against the ropes that sometimes the judges will give you favoritism for, for putting your opponent constantly up against those ropes. And that's where the, the real estate of the fight really sometimes wins you the fight. The Ukrainian contingent representing very well here tonight. Fifth and final round, Bovar Kanikov, Isaac Puma Freeman. Kanikov just looks so fresh still, you know that? I mean, he looks like he could just keep on going and keep on going. Yeah, and again, that's that Eastern European mentality. Yep. They kind of have that stone, emotionless type of, uh, of, of fight mentality when they're in there, you know? And that neck, that neck starts out in his ears and it goes wide. He said, I am prepared. I want to show America who are Ukrainian fighters, Paulie. And I think a lot of us know about that with the gloves on. He wants to start to set a pace and showcase his skills with the gloves off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's fighting a good fight time. He's got a, I tell you, got a tough guy in front of him. And Freeman, I'll tell you another thing Freeman's doing that's smart. Using the clinches to get that rest work. And then when they break, sometimes he's able to land the sharper shots. Let's see. Uh, but he's starting to get the worst for wear. He had good shots there by Freeman. I mean, by Conacol, sorry. And, and Isaac said he was working on the clinch. Yeah. And really, in the clinch, he's he's just been able to nullify more of what Konikov is doing. And then on the outside, it's, it's allowed him to you know, be the sharper guy. But the last round, and now the beginning of this round, it's been Konikov landing the, the, the good shots on the outside. And Freeman has just looked more like an arm-weary fighter. And Konikov, what he's trying to do is back up Freeman. He's been, he's been able to accomplish that. And that's what he's got to keep on doing. Just keep trying to back him up. Because he's starting to get kind of bad now. Look at above the left eye. Mm -hmm. There's a big cut above the left eye of Konikov. Yeah, yeah. You never know, man. Sometimes these judges are weird. They just start to score blood instead of actually scoring the fight. So they did when I did. When I fought this stuff, that's what they did. <laughs> And it was right here, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have an equal amount on each set of notes, so. Nice. You know. Nice, Goldie. Nice. <laughs> I'm wearing black today. But, uh, I don't know, man, because my shirt is not black, so I don't know how many blood on it, but that reminds me, let me try to cover myself here. Really. <laughs> Final 45 seconds of what has been a spectacular battle. Clearly our fight of the night thus far. There's some slow, oh, good job. Oh, caught him. Inside. Well, that takes some skills. He can fend off Freeman and also wave the crowd into the fight. Yep. Okay, there's some swelling on the right side of Freeman's face. I don't know. Yeah, but look at that left eye of Kotikov. Yeah. I'll tell you, that's the thing about bare knuckle, man. You're, you're cutting, you'll swell a lot easier. I still remain with the opinion that it's safer, though, man, because there's not as much impact on right. cerebral. You just, your hands can't take it. Yeah, your hands can take it, but you will get cut and you're not swelling otherwise. Mouth fight proves it here. Really good skill fight. Really has been enjoyable to watch these two guys go at it. Mouth guard is gone again. They go the distance. It's a shame somebody got to lose this fight. This is, this is a well fought fight. Prayers to everyone affected with everything that has gone on in the past number of months in the Ukraine. And prayers to the family of Bovar Kanikov. Bovar putting on a show. Freeman fighting for his home country of Liberia. Amen. They, they, 
They represented well, didn't they? Well, you know, this gives them an, an, an arena, gives them a stage, yep. and they're able to show. But I tell you what, both guys show tremendous physical condition, tremendous technique, and I mean, I don't think there's a loser here. I think both of these guys really showed their skills. I think Isaac Freeman just gets better and better all the time. Here's that Ukrainian flurry, the combination I mentioned earlier, Paulie. Yeah, and there's a little short uppercut there by Konnikov. He, Freeman had blocked the hook with nice, nicely with his hand, but again, the, the the punches and bunches when he when he put Freeman on the defensive, a lot, it started to really uh, sh show more of a result as the fight went on because Freeman was not, still, although he was able to keep his position, he wasn't able to punch back as much anymore as he was getting physically worn down by all that pressure that Konnikov was bringing. Well, Paul, you talked about the real estate. Real estate is so important in boxing because Freeman never got a chance to really extend himself. Yeah. Because, again, that real estate was, like, right on top of him. And, and that's something he did a good and job it, of. And it also stresses you. You know, you're, you're, you're being backed up so consistently that you're, you're thinking just of the counterpunching opportunities. And you're not always able to sort of set up what you want to do because the guy's constantly in front of you, push, forcing you to think defensively. And Freeman has the ability to fight offensively off the defensive front. Right. But it also never gives him a chance to actually match an attack on his own. You know, although, although a good jab by Freeman, gotta say, Freeman has a good jab. Both guys have landed some good jabs and made good use of the jab. Like I said, again, a, a good skill fight by both guys. A uh, little bit of uh, different stylistically uh, matched up fight where Freeman was, has good athleticism while Konnikov has that robotic, come forward, constantly, fundamentally sound, break you kind of mentality. Good fight fought by both guys. Let's see who won. Big Bo with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of five full bare knuckle rounds, we go to the judge's scorecard for the official decision. Judge O'Connor scores at 49 to 46, while judges Levin and Torres scored 48 to 47, declaring your winner by unanimous decision from the Ukraine, Bola! Both of you guys said in this fight, Bovar pointing right up to the sky, to the Lord, everything he's gone through, all the hard work. Uriah Faber has given him a job now. He's training clients at Team Alpha Male and take nothing away from the man he just went five rounds with and Isaac Freeman, here is Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by our winner, Bovar Konakov. First off, a lot of boxers represent the Ukraine. Lomachenko, Usyk, you now represent the Ukraine for bare knuckle. You're gladiating yourself. How does it feel to represent your great nation? I, I am broken. I am broken, very, very pain. When I, five years ago, I see the first bare knuckle fight. My dream, my dream, fight in the United States, but, but I'm not, I'm not happy today because Russian Federation killed my people. Please, if you can, stop the war, please. Ukraine fight for the freedom. Now, our warrior never give up. I show you, we are never give up. We fight for freedom. Yeah, I know what the United States help our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, God bless you, and thank you my people from Ukraine, bro, I love you, we have many people fly to my sister, my wife, my wife, this is my, my world, I love you, this is for you, this is not mine, this is for you, take my love, but thank you very much, thank you, we appreciate it, God bless you. All, all of us in your kids. Never give up. Never give up. Wow, oh, you not respect. And the last. Slava Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! Oh. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to United States. And glory to God. Thank you. Thank I'll let it there, ladies and gentlemen, Bobar. one more time for your winner, Boma Gladiator. Cut 
I said it as he made his way to the Trigon. He is a Ukrainian soldier. And wow, I got chills. That was absolutely spectacular. The battle, and then right afterwards, the words of a very emotional Ukrainian who has gone through so much, who has a dream come true tonight, but still a lot of nightmares that he has to worry about every single day. Yes, I mean, I, I, I'm mesmerized by the fact that I was able to witness that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, our hearts go out, prayers, and hopefully there's peace in that country. Yeah, it's a part of the world that has really not had it easy, you know, from what's happening now, the world war, even before the world war, the Ukrainians were slaughtered in the whole of the war, um, you know, a, a decade before the world war. Um, Ukraine and Ukrainians have, have gone through a lot over the past century in general. So uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's a lot deeper than just recently. Rhino, Claudia, Dave, you and I have experienced a lot over the years in sports and in combat sports. You know what? We all just experienced a very special moment. I've got chills, Goldie. Claudia and I were just talking about that. I, I absolutely echo the sentiments of Benny a moment ago. I've never seen anything quite like that. I mean, Claudia, I've covered 20 different sports over my career, 33 years in the air. I'm not sure I've ever seen a moment quite that poignant, quite that critical, quite that necessary for someone from Ukraine, a country invaded nine months ago, tragically by Russia. The war goes on. And as Goldie said, he's been through so much with his family. That was extraordinary. Yes. And let's not forget that um, I'm going to echo the words uh, from Polly. Um, history has not been kind to this part of the world. And uh, somehow, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they pulled together. Because if we go back to the most dominant forces in the heavyweights back in the 80s and 90s, the Klitschko brothers, and they actually walked away from boxing in order to represent their country and take over in the middle of a revolution. They're still there. Now we bring up Vasily Lomachenko, who walked away from a very profitable boxing career to go back to his country and defend the Ukraine. And then we have somebody like Oleksandr Usyk as he actually unifies the heavyweight champions. He goes back to the Ukraine in order to fight for his country. So there's something to be said about that spirit. And tonight, we got a chance to see it firsthand. I cannot be more proud and honored to be able to be here and be in the presence of such spirited people. So well said. Extraordinary moment, for sure, in the Trigon. Bobar Karakov, the gladiator, fought so well as he took down Freeman. You almost forget what a tremendous technical fight that was, as Polly and Benny and Goldie pointed out. Yes. All right, so we move ahead now. Jessica Link, Monica Medina, the first women's bout of the night here at BYB 13 in Tampa. Should be a tremendous fight. It will be an extraordinary fight. We understand Monica Medina was looking for an opportunity to avenge a defeat that she thought was not fair. And that was a defeat that was actually handed down by Patty. Patty comes from a long line of fighters, and we all know what kind of fighter she actually can be. Biloxi was not the best place for her, and that result will sit in controversy. So Monica Medina was looking for the opportunity for not only events that lost, but also state her name in BYB. So since Patty couldn't come over because of a shorthanded uh, injury to her knee, uh, Link comes in, and Jessica is always up for the game. She's always willing to take a fight, no matter how short notice. This was actually an only three-week notice, but she's game, and I know that she will give Monica Medina a run for her money. Jessica Link, the soft southpaw out of Wichita, Kansas, a former corrections officer, will be tested again against Medina. First women's bout of the night. Super featherweight Medina Link is coming up from Tampa, Florida.
In three weeks, BYB Extreme makes history, bringing bare knuckle fighting to the state of South Carolina for the very first time. Our main event of Battle of Unbeatens for the interim BYB Super Middleweight Championship. Laurent T. Smash Nelson colliding with Sam the Caveman Liera. That's Friday, December 9th from the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Get your tickets at BYBTickets.com. Tonight, Tampa Bay. In three weeks, South Carolina. The caveman is 4-0. All of his victories inside the Trigon. Not one, but two BKB champions have been defeated inside the Trigon by Laurent T. Smash Nelson. That our main event in South Carolina. Our main event, our two title fights still to come here tonight from Tampa. But first, Monica Medina in what was supposed to be a rematch with Patty Juarez. Now our tale of the tape, as we have well established, Paulie, is a fight as she is set to take against Jessica Link. And Medina, 38 years old. Link, 33 years old, five years younger. Also has a one-inch height and uh, reach advantage, but a four-inch height advantage. Let's see if she knows how to use it. Medina is tough, man. I, I thought she won the fight with Juarez, but let's see how she rebounds after the controversial loss. So did Monica, by the way. And you know, these, these girls fought in MMA, and of course, Monica ended up winning that, but Jessica thinks that in bare knuckles, she's gonna have the advantage. We'll wait and see. Big move. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout on the card is in the women's super featherweight division and is scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Interesting first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome Jessica Link. Jessica Link, five years a law enforcement officer, attended Wichita State University for criminal justice. This fight, as Benny mentioned, is a rematch of a bare knuckle MMA fight back on December 17th of 2021. Monica won TKO ground and pound. Okay, Jessica said, I'm not a grapple, I'll be the first one to admit it. She even did it that she talked to Monica immediately after saying, all right, you got me, congratulations, I respect you. Now you gotta come into my world. We saw Monica in what Jessica wants to call her world in a title fight against Patty Juarez. This one has all the makings of something special. Exactly, and Jessica Link, she thinks she's the better striker than Monica, and that's what she's gonna try to do. Use great footwork, use her speed, fight from a distance, but be effective. He says, you know, with there's very, pretty much the same size, where she's been fighting out of her particular way. The, the opponents were always so much bigger. Now, he says, and Monica, we're the same size, so I'm gonna bring it. My size, my style, and no takedown tonight. As she mentioned more than once as we visited the last few days, she fought in Doral, lost to Pink Tyson, Kalia Karuni, going the distance back in August. And she is set to enter the Trigon here tonight and earn her first career victory in BYB Extreme. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner, here is Monica Medina. so frustrated she's angry because she said I came here to get my belts Kalia Karuni wouldn't fight me for an interim belt so she just wants to make quick work of Jessica Link and get back to the title picture and that is not in a disrespectful way 
to Jessica Link. That's just a very fired up and motivated Monica. Yeah, yeah, she just looks at Jessica Link as the one that's in front of her. You know, she wants to get in the, in the trigon with somebody. She hasn't been able to get the opponent she wanted. It's Jessica Link, and which ironically, like this guy said, it's a, it's a rematch of that bare knuckle MMA fight they had not that long ago. And Monica's a testament of physical fitness oh, that comes with the combat sport. Yeah. She has lost 50 pounds. She said she was a fat mother, <laughs> and now, a shit, look at that. Would you even know there was 50 pounds on that body? Not Absolutely at all. Not. Trained Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu five days a week, lost the weight, now she's throwing hands, and she's looking to put on her performance here in this super featherweight matchup with the official introductions once again, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman's Bare knuckle bout is scheduled for five two minute rounds in the super featherweight division. And it's brought to you by Ape Man Strong, our referee in charge when the bell rings, Mr. Frank Gentile. Let's meet the fighters first, fighting out of the blue corner. She stands five feet, eight inches tall. She weighed in at 130 pounds. She holds a bare knuckle record of one win versus two defeats. And she fights out of Wichita, Kansas. Introducing Jessica Link. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet, four inches tall. She weighed in at 128 pounds. She holds a bare knuckle record of zero wins versus one defeat. And she fights out of Biloxi, Mississippi. Here is Monica. Phenomenal Medina! Five two minute rounds. Medina and Link. Put on here on the red. Ready? Fight! Here we go! Monica Medina in the red wraps. White, black shorts, white top. Jessica Link, the multicolor. She is a southpaw. She is sporting the blue wraps. And right away, I want to see the hands of Monica Medina. You talked about how long it took to recuperate, so let's see how they hold up here. She did say that I'm going to work the body a lot more or attempt to tonight than she did against Patty Juarez. Good dirty boxing by Jessica Link. Both women have the clinch background. You can see what Medina was trying to do on the outside, laying that straight right hand. She was throwing it pretty accurately while there was some distance between them. Let's see how she gets back on it now. And there's a nice right hand there by Medina. She's, she's honing in on that shot. And Jessica's backing up. She's not being first, and that's the key. She's got to be first. She cannot let Medina start get, closing that gap and managing that real estate. But Medina, I, I tell you, man, she'll, she'll, she'll get you. She'll manage the real estate. She keeps landing that right yeah. hand, you know? Heavy hitter, very strong, tremendous condition, as Benny pointed out. She's been very accurate with this right hand. And again and again. And again, double it up. Right on cue, Paul. Now that was instinctive. The double up on that Four, shot, see that opportunity, that five, was impressive. Yeah, she's you thought she'd been working on, on, seven, on the accuracy of that right hand and throwing eight, it properly. Eight, especially eight, with the southpaw in front of her. You can tell she's been working on the proper fundamentals. Eight, yeah, like the southpaw cut open under the eye from that double right. There's the body that she talked about working. Ultra aggressive tonight. Two minute rounds. And it's literally just one hand there. I mean, she's using the left hand to measure Link and the right hand, and Link is just has to make that adjustment. She has to see that this is coming. It's... Well, Link does not look right. Look at her. I mean, she's... You gotta make an adjustment with that. You gotta force Medina to do something else. Medina came with this game, very certain game plan. It's been working tremendously in that first round. There's these right hands, you see. Medina pretty much is using the left hand to measure and the right hand to throw hard. And they're, they're, they're getting a little bit of a clinch. We're actually, which, where both girls are obviously known a little bit for the clinch work. There's again, that straight right hand. 
Watch with Ida. She's using the left hand, the probe, and then boom, with the right hand. And there's a double right hand, there's a knockdown. Paul actually did a good job of holding that lead hand down when she pulled the right hand. That's a lot of shots with the right hand, though. You wonder yeah, the total. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and she's hitting, she's not hitting any soft spot. She's hitting the top of Link's head, so Mike, we'll see if that thing, if her hand holds up. That's a good point, Betty. Your hand starts to hurt, you throw shots that hard consistently, especially when they're landing. Which is why Monica said she's gonna work the body more this time. What? As much to do damage as to avoid damage to her hands. Round number two. Five two-minute rounds in this super featherweight women's matchup. Jessica Link in the blue wrap, the southpaw, Monica Medina. Pouring it on here early in round two. You gotta give Link credit. Right, She's stop, very stop, good stop, at that dirty boxing. She is indeed. She knows how to get that tie plumb and then spins her to the side. But is she? Is, is it just a defensive maneuver, yeah, or is. Is it, can she create offense off of it? Because that's what she's going to need to do if she's going to win this fight tonight. Nice get a counter right left hand there by Lincoln. She needs to do some of that. She's got to be a little bit more creative with her attack. Jessica taking this fight on Medina. three weeks' notice, Polly. Got Medina cut now, though. And what, what worked in that first round was the way she, with the left hand, she was measuring her and then throwing the right. She's gotten away from that. Tried it there, but like you said, oh, oh good right hand. Grabs in there after Medina landed right, a couple stop, of good stop. right hands. But again, Benny, you got me wondering now how many right hands Go, like that fight. can Medina throw before and her right hand starts to hurt. She's got Link bleeding like crazy, though. I'll tell you what, Jessica, when they get in the clinch, though, that dirty boxing, Jessica stays busy right there. Even right, if they're right. little bitter patty right. punches, they add up the accumulation of damage. Yeah, but I'll tell you what's adding up is these right hands Medina's landing on the <laughs> outside. That's, that's, oh, nice counter left hand by Link. She, she, you see it once in a while from Link, but she doesn't move off of it. She doesn't know how to work off of, off of uh, the follow-up on the left hand when she does counter it, and it's Medina who ends up following up and if she gets hit. Well, that body is there for Medina to hit as far as Link, because look how upright she is. She leans to one side. So that body is there, but she's not looking for it. Thanks, sir. See that right hand digging that body? I'll tell you. Time! I bet Medina's right hand is super sore and her left hand doesn't do anything because she hasn't really thrown her left hand with anything in being intentions except more to grab and probe and, and, and move that lead hand out of the way. She is cut though, yeah. Yeah, she's cut above right. the bridge of the nose. One of those counter left hands by Link ended up cutting her. That's the thing about bare knuckle, man. I mean, it doesn't have to land clean, it just has to land or graze you. Sometimes grazing causes more blood. But that, that's gonna come down straight in the eye. So many shots at the end of the round here. Medina again with that, using the left hand just to measure. And then she's, she's trying to probe, grab, or use the left hand to maybe control the lead hand of Link. And the right hands are what's landing more. Well, good shots there by Link as she spun off the ropes there. And there's the right hand. And Link again, she spun off correctly, but she stands, she stands straight up. Watch, she's gonna spin off, but look, she stands straight up. She's got no base of power there, Polly. Yep. Straight. That's actually not the same shot, but yeah, we're, we're gonna. We're, we're, we're basically, what she did was she ended up stepping around the side, and then she was straight up, and she ended up getting hit with another, another good right hand. Round number three. They started before the bell, a little extra overtime, I guess. Neither fighter reacted negatively. I don't even think they hear anything right now. They're so no. keyed up, you know, so focused on what they're trying to do here. Jessica Link, that fight against Pink Tyson was on five weeks notice. She said, I just stay in the gym, I stay around the gym, I stay in shape, train my clients, work my skills. And she wants to win this rematch, even though it's a different form of combat sports, it is still another fight against Monica Medina. Boy, they did a great job on that cut above Medina's nose, above the bridge of the nose. Totally stopped. Now you got me staring at that right hand, Paulie, and you can you can visibly see the swelling of the right hand of Monica Medina. Yeah, but Medina, I think that's why sometimes she's turning southpaw. I mean, she uh, she's not using she's not as busy with the right hand, not because she's doubting herself, but because it probably hurts. I mean, I can I can relate. I can remember you know hurting my right hand against Lobo when I fought him, and I was just strictly using left hands because my my right hand was killing me. 
You got to teach Medina how to use that check hook with the left. Yeah, yeah. Though it's a little harder with a southpaw. You know, you need them to fall in, which Lobo was doing a lot of in my fight. Can Jessica Link mount her own offensive attack, though? Under 30 on the clock here, round number three. Well, I think the fact that Medina is not willing to throw that right quite as recklessly as she did in the first round is really helping Link. And good dirty boxing again by Jessica Link. Over, under, over, under. Answered by Monica with an uppercut at the bell. I'm trying after the bell just for good part of good measure by Link. Well, they, they started before the bell, they, they finished after the bell. Might as well. <laughs> Three minutes, they fight two minutes, they want to get it on a little more. Action. That's right. <laughs> Third round, two minutes, ten seconds. <laughs> that bell has about as much meaning as Taco Bell for these people. They're here to fight. Just keep the Taco Bell away from Seth Chief. <laughs> get down to 135. That's what's amazing in this sport, though, the, the, the damage they had takes and it, again what areas you attack is in that first round all those shots were right in all the hard part right on the head in, in fact jessica even said a couple landed near the back of her head she had said something to the referee said all right you know frank gentile said i'll keep an eye on it we'll see what's happening battle continues this is the fight this is the fight we expected link and medina round number four Jessica trying to fight long at the beginning of this round. Starting with the jab here. This is great dirty boxing ball. Oh, Clinch work 101 from both women. Monica is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Jessica, a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In fact, Jessica's one professional mixed martial arts fight was against Frank Mir's daughter, Bella. Yeah. And Bella submitted her with her first round armbar back in June. Jessica says, this is my forum though, this is my place. After a fast start, by Medina, Jessica Link trying to pick it up. And you're not seeing, Paulie, that overhand right that Monica was throwing so well at the beginning of the fight. Well, Benny, like you said, at the end of the first round, I mean, she threw a lot of those right hands, landed a lot of them. I, I, I think Medina would love to throw more right hands, but with bare knuckle, that's one of the things you're risking is you, you, your hands do start to hurt when you, when you land. And when she's throwing them right, she's not locking that wrist anymore. Both women are all kinds of busted up, too. I'll tell you what, this has been a battle. Well, it's gonna be interesting what the judges deem to be the right yes. work that they did in this fight. Yeah, I think, Medina, I think Medina's winning the fight. She's been you know, initiating all the action. She's been landing the better shots. And she's been setting up the attack. I mean, the win does not really initiate a lot. She's more reacting off of, off of Medina. She has landed her skill, but she hasn't exactly taken everything in control of the fight and tried to actually go initiate anything herself. It might have been more Medina doing that the whole time. If anything, Paulie, the initiations that we have seen from Jessica all pretty much came in that round. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's got, she's got herself behind. I think she knows she needs to, you know, get herself back in the fight. And, and she's gonna need a big fifth round, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think Jessica would know that too. And here's your dirty boxing. Under, under, over, under. Yeah, those are good shots on the inside. Hey, man, you know, they did fight in MMA, right? So they, yep. they're they both familiar with these uh, in tight. And a bare knuckle fights. MMA. Oof. And Jorge Masvidal's game bread FC. But what was interesting was the way they were calling each other, texting each other. Hey, it looks like it's yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to yeah. happen. She's tired. They wanted this opportunity. And they're putting on a show. Fifth and final round. Two minutes remain. Medina in the red wraps. Link 
in the blue wraps. Medina back out firing those right hands. You know I'm going to save it for now. Yep. But she's being smart about it. She's attacking that body now. She's hitting a softer <laughs> part. And that's what she told us in the fighter meetings, Benny. Again, Link needs to initiate. She needs to initiate here. And it's been Medina more initiating again. And the athleticism and the explosive attack of Monica Medina is evident as well. Yeah, see, Link reacts there, and that's it. She's got to follow that up. You see, when Link lands, she lands based on Medina's attack, and she never follows up when she land, does land off of Medina's attack. Like, it, it, I guess if you're not going to initiate, and then you end up landing off of the opponent's attack, you've then got to follow up with your own initiation. Link never really takes charge of her fights, it, it, what, for what I've seen of her. She's tough. She hangs in there. She's game as it gets, but she never takes charge of a fight enough to win a fight. But watch your feet, though, Polly. If she would turn pigeon toed, then she could get that thrust coming forward. But with her feet pointing out, she's on her heel. Yeah. And there's yeah. no cushion there. You got that right. 45 seconds. Medina went the full seven rounds in the title fight with Juarez. Boy, you talk about game fighters. Look at all that blood. Yeah. And they're going at it. They went at it a couple of rounds before the bell even rang. It's a rough plane ride home after fights like this. Man. You got that right. Good right hand around the beam. All right, stop, 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 stop. Oh, good right hand again by the beam. in the hands of the judges now. And our official decision is coming up next. Got a black shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> well, Polly was wearing a blanket. Know what happened, Polly? Grabbing a blanket. <laughs>
the G-rated version. Monica Medina, while we were at break, says, this is how we freaking fight. Who has won the decision? Here's Big Mo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of five full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges, see them about 50 to 44, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Monica Vanamam Medina! 50-44 on all the scorecards, and look at Monica. <laughs> she was in a fight. Here's Big Mo with the victor. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by our winner, Monica Medina. Monica, you got that elusive W. You had a championship fight before. You're supposed to rematch tonight. Unfortunately, the champion got hurt, out of your control. But she came in here and put on a show. How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. You know, I, I definitely wanted to get the finish, but shit, Jessica's tough, man. Um, you know, a little disappointed it wasn't Patty, but I got a little more time to work on that, you know, come out sometime next year. You know, I wish Patty speedy recovery, full recovery, but uh, me and her got some unfinished business. Now, I gotta ask, how does that right hand feel? You landed so many, sh look, that thing is swollen, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at that. Now, were you expecting to land that many punches? I know you wanted to put her away early, but what were you trying to come in here and do? You know, I, was, I wanted to work the body, you know, hit the chin, take her out within three rounds, but like I said, she's tough. Uh, this hand right here, I tore a ligament in the fight with Patty, so all the way up until this past Wednesday, I've been in physical therapy twice a week working on it. I got an appointment Monday because I told her I was probably going to fuck it up again, so we'll just keep working on it, and uh, it'll be good by the time I fight again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Medina fans in the building, one more time for your winner, Monica Fanon. forthcoming where Desmond Green said, you know what, I would have fought with a bad hand if, if Gabe Fryer was game that night. Monica's hand was, was altered. It was a little injured, but man, she used it effectively, didn't she, Benny? Absolutely. And you know, at the beginning of the fight, I think by throwing somebody to this right hand, she put, the, she sent the message out to Jessica. You know what, I'm coming forward. I'm bringing the fight. And it's obviously the way the judges looked at it. She brought the fight, and thus she got the unanimous decision win. Do you see improvement from her performance against Patty Pauly? Um, You know, different styles. You know, she had a south point in front of her tonight. Um, you know, you're, you're going about it in a different way. Patty shows up to win, so she'll give you a little bit more openings. You know, Jessica Link, I, I haven't noticed she ever shows up to win. She shows up to fight, but she, she there's never a, an... an a, anything inside her body language that makes her go for the win. Like, she reacts a lot. Like I said, during the fight, she doesn't follow up when she does land a good shot. She just kind of stands there waiting for you to constantly attack her. So it's hard to compare compare uh, um, the performances. But I think keeping busy is always good when you're looking to fight uh, Juarez because Juarez is always a tough out. Yeah, one of the greatest female fighting families in Mexico. Big sister, little sister, world champions in boxing, world champion in bare knuckle is Patty Juarez, and she's still in the headlight for the winner again tonight, Monica Medina. Dave Ryan, Claudia Trejos. Wow, Goldie. Wow, Claudia. That's all I'm saying. A tremendous fight that goes the distance with the women. And Monica Medina, just that much better. Just that much better than Jessica Link, I thought, who fought really well tonight. The first round was all Medina. Link came back to make it very interesting. Ty Plum, the dirty boxing. Yes. That you demonstrated with me between rounds was a big factor in that. Absolutely, and a shout out to Jessica because, again, she was game, she took it, she went the distance. Very few people thought she had it, and the truth is we all knew she had the grit, and that's exactly what she showed tonight. Tony Lopez, DJ Linderman are next. Yes. It is the co-main event here in Tampa, big boys. BYB 13. It's the second heavyweight fight of the night. Tony Lopez, one of the all-time GOATs of combat sports. He'll be 49 years old later this month. DJ Linderman we saw at BYB 11 at Doral near Miami was fantastic. Absolutely, and Goldie did the math for us. So he added not only the amount of fights, but the age between them, and all I'm saying is they, they're up there. Uh, I'll let Goldie let us know the details on that. But the truth of the matter is, I have a hard time with this fight. They're both great gentlemen, great guys, great fighters. Tony has been around forever. 
and DJ Linderman gave us an outstanding performance, a great surprise, a great upset, and he's looking for the opportunity to fight none other than Data 5000. So the only obstacle he has between then and now has a name and a last name, Tony Lopez. Who is fantastic. Now, almost 49 years old, Claudia. What makes him so good at this stage of his career? The fact that he's 49 years old. <laughs> the fact that he's been around forever. The fact that he has over 100 fights in his record. Uh, uh, the fact that he's fought everybody and anybody. So this is the gentleman that understands that it's not about how fast you get from point A to point B, but how efficient you are. So he wastes no energy. He's very assertive and he just conserves energy and he understands that it's not about just going out there and throwing all kinds of punches. It's about being effective. He just doesn't know when to stop. Almost 49 and still at top of his fight game. So when you think about his strategy with this one with DJ Linderman, who's relatively experienced within the mighty trigon of BYB, what will be the keys, Claudia, in your mind, head-to-head? -head? How do you best preview this fight? And you know we can't wait. It's the big dudes going head-to-head. -head. Nothing quite like the heavyweights in the small fighting surface. The instant confrontation of BYB. Well, one of the biggest issues that anybody can have facing somebody like Tony Lopez is the fact that he's so tall. And he has perhaps one of the longest reaches that we've seen. So at this point in time, we're looking at 79 inches. And when we spoke to DJ, he was speaking about the time when he actually faced Josh Burns, not of the same dimensions, but he said, I just have to weather it. I have to make sure I bring the fight in, I keep it in short, because I need to go to the body. So yes, I am going to have to take a couple of punches and then just, you know, systematically tear my opponent down. Let's not compare Tony Lopez with Josh. Not to say that they're, one is better than the other, but one has a lot more experience than the other. So Tony has faced fighters that come to him like that, that want to come under the guard, make sure they can actually get across the defense, and then go for the body. So he's seen it, he's been there, he's done that, and he's taken the win. Wow, it should be fun to watch. In your mind, will this fight go deep? Will this go into later rounds? It, absolutely. There's always a probability knowing Linderman, what he can do, yes. Can't wait for the heavyweight bout coming up here in Tampa, Florida at BYB 13. This is going to be great. Linderman Lopez, Monica Medina. Oh, that little one. How the sweet. baby. How sweet. Headphones are important. Yes. Got to protect the little kid's hearing, right, Claudia? <laughs> also, time to celebrate for Monica Medina. Okay, so tell me if this has ever happened to you. You're listening to a podcast and you hear something funny or exciting that you want to share with a friend. So then you have to send them a link to the podcast, message them the timestamps, and then they have to scrub through to find that one little moment that you were trying to share. And of course they never do because that's too much work. But what if you could share moments from your favorite podcast instantly? Well, Pick Cherries is a free app where you can listen to all your favorite podcasts and share moments from them like never before. Let me show you how easy it is. So say you're listening to this podcast and you hear a moment that you want to share with your friend. All you need to do is press the Shazam like button at the bottom of your screen and you'll be able to instantly trim a 60 second clip or pick cherry from the show. Then just press the share button and you're good to go. Your friends will receive a link directly to that highlight. It's just as easy as sharing a TikTok. And get this, pick cherries keeps track of what you enjoy and will generate a feed of other pick cherries that other listeners have created. So you're only ever a few swipes away from discovering your next favorite podcast. Pick cherries will revolutionize the way that you listen to, discover, and share podcasts. So download it today. I will start my math as Claudia alerted everyone to and promised that I would. This will be the combined 165th professional combat confrontation for Tony Lopez and DJ Linderman, a combined age of 87, and you probably get the easy part of the tail of the tip. <laughs> 48 years old for Tony Lopez. Yes, that's not a typo. He's 48 years old. DJ Linderman, the young man in the fight, 39 years old. 79-inch <laughs> reach for Lopez. He's six foot five. He's gonna have a four-inch height advantage on Linderman, and he's gonna have a five and a half inch reach advantage on him. Let's see how he uses it, because Linderman is actually the heavier guy. 
Although I don't know if that's going to slow down his feet in terms of closing the gap on the bigger Lopez. Let's see. Lopez on a week's notice went the distance and defeated Josh Burns. Josh Burns was beaten in the third round, stopped in the third by DJ Linderman. This title is on the line in the heavyweight division. Big Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our co-main event of the evening. Seven, three minute rounds for the BYB Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome the Trigon, DJ Linderman. October 11th, 2019, M1, DJ Lenderman, Tony Lopez, MMA. DJ said, I poured it on early, but then at 2.59 of the first, boom, head kick, victory, Tony Lopez. He said more than once to all of us, he does not get to use his feet in that fashion in this fight tonight. And well, not only that, but he said, you know, he feels Tony Lopez has lost his legs. He no longer has the legs, so he feels that he can step in there, close the distance, and apply the damage, you know, inside. That's where he wants to fight. Be in, be out. Be in, be out. But he said, I got to be a lot more in than out. But I do need to get inside of that length of Tony Lopez and not let Tony, as he's very good at, systematically break me down. DJ Linderman's been hitting the hills, old school work, used to jump boxes. He's a steel worker. So we have the steel worker against the construction worker and both men badly want to leave with the BYB heavyweight belt. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, the BYB heavyweight champion, God of Destruction, Kryptonite Lopez. Professional mixed martial arts fights. He was stopped by KO or TKO. He had 32 losses, Benny. He was stopped by KO or TKO four. Let's count them. Just four times in nearly 100 MMA fights. But this guy knows how to fight. He's going to get mad at me because I said he was 49 years old in the opening. Well, well, he is. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. November 28th. Yeah, but you know what? Here's what he said about DJ Lim. He said, you know what? I don't even train for this guy. And so he says, I don't pay attention to my opponent. I know what I can do. And that's what he's going to bring. This guy's got tremendous savviness inside that ring. Can be in the moment and execute plans on the cuff. Yeah, man. He, when, he, when he's fighting, it's like he's in his living room. Yeah. He's so comfortable. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got part of his mind on the fight and part of his mind thinking about what his plans are next week and stuff. Well, his birthday is next week, Paulie, so he should yeah, be making plans. That's how calm this guy looks. <laughs> Tonight, the first defense of his heavyweight strap. Tony Lopez, DJ Linderman, title fight, big ball. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening. Live on the stadium app, seven, three minute rounds for the BYB heavyweight championship. Our referee in charge with the bell rings, Bobby Wambacher. Let's meet the fighters. First, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inch is tall. He weighed in at 263 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of one win, one loss, and he fights out of Wairika, California. Hey, go, Introducing go, go, go. DJ, the protege.
and his opponent, the champion, fighting out of the red corner. He stands six foot, five inches tall. He weighed in at 249 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of two wins, three losses, one draw. And he fights out of Krypton, California, introducing the reigning, defending B All right, gentlemen, this is for the BYB Heavyweight Championship. We've been through the rules in the back. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up if you want. Tony's got good game in shape. <laughs> he does. Look at him. You ready, Tony? Fight. Here we go! Heavyweight title fight. Southpaw DJ Linderman in the blue wraps. He's got the white trunks. He lands first. Tony Lopez, black with white trim. He is in the red wraps. He is 6'5", weighed in at 249, 262 for Linderman, as Paulie showed you on the tail of the tape. Hey, Paulie, look at the way Tony barely has any wraps at all. Yeah. Now, what is the advantage of that as far as the way DJ's wrapped him? I mean, I don't know as far as, because for me, I would have always wanted to protect my hand as much as possible. But Tony's got so much experience. I mean, at this point, you know, he's probably calloused up his hands. And then he, and he, he'd rather have that old school feel of just having bare hands. I, I, I would always have chosen the DJ Lindemann wraps, personally. But Tony's a throwback. Yeah, to, to say the least. To say the least. Oh, nice job. Tonight, his seventh bare knuckle battle, 115th combat competition, number 50 for Linderman. And DJ's really committed to that jab. Yes, I mean, he he's is. something behind that. Yeah, he made good in and out so far by, Lind by Linderman. I was wondering how I, how I was going to be affected by his heavy away. Nice shot there by Tony Lopez, and he backs him right off. Cut over the eye is down to 5,000. Watches closely that's that his counter. heavyweight fight. And that's that counter by Lopez. And that's the thing about Ben Elko, man. Any, and any little shot is going to cut you open. And guys with this much experience have a ton of scar tissue too, Paulie. Yeah, you got that right. And you know, DJ talked about the fact he does not want to fight inside. And he said that's what happened. You know, every time they clinched against Josh, he would hold up his hand and try to get the referee to break it. Oh, nice shot there by Lopez. Lopez wow. gotten confident. Good body shot. That hurt him. Yeah. Okay, now, folks, you're going to get the chance to see the mind of a true warrior in Lopez here. Watch the way he survives this. I mean, Lindelin was delayed reaction and reacting to the yep. He's still delayed in trying to follow this up. He's barely throwing any punches since the knockout. And Lopez is clearly still trying to put the next count right here. And now, Kiss is being thrown from DJ Linderman. He knows he's done damage to Tony Lopez. Nice shot to Bellarmine. Superman looking to take out Trip tonight. Good fight. Good start for DJ Linderman. You know, he surprises every time. Hey, watch out. One get in. He's not doing something. He does. He pulls something. One in. And he's got to get in fast. And this was uh, towards the end of 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 the end
And it's over the eye, so keep a lookout for any blood that affects the vision of DJ Linderman. Reported on in round one. Got the 10 8. As Lopez took a knee after the body shot. Well, DJ Jones, he's never felt better, but he's showing us. Big time. Long range with that jab. And a follow up. Closing the gap very well. Not only nice body shot, he hurt him again. I tell you, Lopez is bending over trying to protect that body. This may very well be DJ Linderman's night. Lopez is in big trouble. And DJ's got that mouth wide open. He's trying to find air right now. And as I mentioned in the in the MMA world, 32 oh, yeah. setbacks, four times, only four times. TKO or KO finish. For Tony Lopez in MMA. Well, he'll tell you. He says, you know, I can take a shot, and I don't mind taking a shot, boy. And he's showing us here. Stop! Stop! Get back. Only well, he's got an opponent who doesn't mind giving him some either. <laughs> Both guys nice and bloody, man. Well, I did his fight with Joey Beltran, the first one, and boy, that was a bloody mess. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to Houston Alexander, win over the Mexicutioner. I'll tell you, Lopez, when they get in close, still protects that rib, or that, that liver side, anyway. But he's starting to lick go of his hands out a lot more than he was. And you're starting to wonder if the, the, the weight of Lindemann is going to start to cost him here, for conditioning-wise, because he's starting to slow down just a little bit. And that's what Tony said. He said he didn't lose as much weight as I thought he would for a title fight. Now Tony trying to break down the body of his opponent. Yeah. And a couple of those look like a hip pointer. Yeah. You know, where it was like right below that waist. Lindemann looking for a from the referee, but the referee's not going to break them if, 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 if Lopez is still able to keep working these body shots. He's got some good leverage on them. He's got to fight his way out of there. He can't be the referee's not going to do it for him. Yeah, especially if Lopez is working. You know, he's, Lopez is clearly working. Stop, the ref's not going to break you there. That's uh, bare knuckle right, rules in general. Fight. Stay busy in the clinch. Clinch stays busy. Hey, is starting to look more and more armor, even from the outside. He hasn't landed a good shot about a minute at least. And it's been Lopez on the inside getting that work done. And again, Stop. you start to wonder about the conditioning Stop. of Stop. Lindemann with this weight, if it affects him. I know he said he felt the best he's felt in a long time. But you start, that, that can go away real quick if you start to get fatigued. And this weight, that heavier weight that he's carrying, could affect him. Don't, don't hook it. And the right hand of, of, Lo, of Lopez is landing to that. But look at that, at will. It's like a jackhammer. We got ourselves a fight! Yeah, he's fought himself back into this one at the second half of that one. But isn't that amazing the way he can turn around and fight? I mean, this guy just has survival skills. Calm in the storm. And he's got that presence of mind at the moment to do the right thing. I mean, what do Yogi Berra say? It ain't over until it's over. Ah. Double jab. Left hand, left hand. But then Lopez comes back. Watch that right hand. That right hand was just being buried to the body of DJ Litterman. And see that one? That was kind of below when you get kind of hit that hip pointer in football. Yeah. I think if you go orthodox, we got ourselves a battle of wills at this point. And these guys are, I mean, they're veterans. These guys have been in many, many, many wars. And so far, another one happening right in front of our face with the heavyweight belt on the line. The battle continues. Linderman in the blue wraps. Red wraps for the champion, Tony Lopez. DJ wants the belt, and then he wants Donna. Good connections by Linderman. Answer by Lopez. Cameraman who did a great job not tumbling. 
Tony the Luna will try to start the round fast, but now does he have enough left to maintain a pace in this round? As Lopez, you know, is gonna fight. And what DJ's trying to do is get back to the body, get to that solar plexus that he had some success with. Nice jab by Linderman. Tony Lopez's eyes are closing. Yes. He looks the worst for wear, but he's actually starting to fight his way back into this. Stop! Stop! Right. Right. Cameraman is going to get double pay tonight. Just for saving the camera. <laughs> and we don't want him to read. Switch stance, always utilized by Tony Lopez. So now it's South Paul, South Paul.
fake and he sustained something was smart by Lopez to grab off the limit and put him in the top one and land a right hand in the face. I mean, his eyes, he can't be seen on that level. It's got to be close. I mean, that's not the one that there's an over there, true, though. Just completely close, blocking, bloody. It's your belt. It's your belt. Stop. 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 Whoever walks away with the belt is going to have earned it and earned it in an extraordinary fashion. Nice jab there by Linda Moran. Well, let me fight to go back into the fight. I don't think Tony's seen any of those shots. Oh, snapped his head right back. I tell you, this, is, this fight is an example of why you don't score the fight with blood because oh, this is a really, really competitive fight. When you look at the, the damage on their faces, and you think Linda Moran's winning a one-sided fight, but this fight is very, very competitive. Yeah, you see the face of Monica Medina? Oh, yeah, yeah. And she won 50-44 on the scorecards. Nice jab there by Linda McGuire. And that score was a really solid jab this round. And again, he might have been a good point. I don't know if Lopez can see the shots. Look at that. Look at the left eye. That's amazing. He's even standing. Tony tried to work his way up the ropes and sneak one in. I'll tell you, I don't even know if, if there's an orbit issue there. Get my boy. Get my boy. Get my boy. Well, what is it going to do? Here comes the doctor. You just have to finish. The doctor's coming in now. So you want to be a bare knuckle fighter? Ah. And the, the doctor's looking at very intense areas right there. How many fingers? Oh, he's pretty much. Yeah. How many fingers? Two. You can see still. He's going to let it continue. He said two. Maybe I'm getting old, but I, I wouldn't let it continue. When I was younger, I mean, I, 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 get it. I fought 10 rounds out of 12 with a broken orbit of bone myself, but I don't know. Tony's 49. He's been in a lot of tough fights. You can be yeah, okay. You can see how many fingers you're holding up, but as a doctor, you got to know there's a risk of an orbital fracture here, you, know? you ready? Yeah. Tony, you ready? Fight. Well, we know that Bobby Wambacher is right on top of it, and he'll keep a very close eye with fighter safety being paramount in any combat competition. This, this fight has had some good momentum swings, I'll tell you that. Yes. And this is not just going on a drill. And now, you know what? Not exactly proper, if you will, but DJ Linderman showing a little swagger, throwing Tony around a moment ago. Well, he looks like he got a second win. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you start to see the damage on your opponent's face. You can sort of, oh, nice jet. And really, that's the thing. I mean, you can keep it simple now, because Tony can't really see the shots coming that, that, that easily. So you can just keep it simple and use some straight shots, quick, sharp jabs. You'll save energy, and you'll also score and keep doing damage. I mean, that's really, oh, nice shots there by Tony. Tony's not going to be undaunted there. Just keep it simple. It's that kiss method. Kids, keep it simple, stupid. It, it really, you'll save energy and you'll be effective because I don't think Tony can see a lot at this point. And because of that, what the DJ's got to do is stay in the middle. Try to have Tony try to find him. Because when he goes back to the corner, that's when Tony's very effective attacking his body. Yeah, you don't want to let Tony put you on the back foot at this point. Tony's you know, he's a wounded animal. You want to keep him on the back foot. You don't want him putting you on the back foot. Because if you keep Tony on the back foot right now, you know, you're in a position where you can keep initiating offense and he may not see big shot still just under 90 seconds remaining here in round number five lopez with a couple connections this is an amazing example of will the Rocky movie. I'm seeing three of them hit the one in the middle. And Tony, is, you can see the instincts of a, of a veteran of so much combat competition that he's throwing and trying to find somewhere to land on his opponent, even though he's badly broken. But not broken down 100%. Not stop. fight is still up for grabs, as is the heavyweight belt. And Tony's 
corner is urging him to, to put DJ on the ropes. Put him on the ropes and then go to the bottom. See right there, see that's when he's effective. <laughs> oh, as a jab, again, the sharp jabs, and Tony grabbed a hold of his mouthpiece a couple of times after some of those hard jabs that Lindemann landed. See the heart of Lopez, though, making him fight him back into the fight, but Lindemann again with a stiff jab. That jab has bode well for DJ. Oh! The, doctor has, the doctor has called the fight. With five rounds, hey, he was, yeah, he was right. Oh, yeah. DJ predicted it. Yeah! Past five. Yep. Yeah! The doctor has called it, and we have a new BYB heavyweight champion, DJ I fucking told you. Let me keep working on you then. I love you, Pop! Yeah! Yeah! All day, baby! All day! Oh! Hold this one. You can have as much you want now, baby. You can have as much you want. All day. All day. He did. Everything he said. Everything he said. Okay, cabron. Shit, baby. Man, what he said? Fuck you, baby! The title's coming back, baby! That's what's up, Dougie! Loses in his first title defense. Good, Dad. Tyreek Hill, baby! Number one, baby! I love Tyreek Hill! Watch out! You know, it, it's just amazing to witness this. I mean, because again, you see swing back and forth. Both absorbed incredible punishment. Both were on adrenaline, and they were still at the end. They're willing. The doctor finally stopped it, but I mean, both guys still willing, both guys trying to find a way. That's why it's it just amazing me, these warriors, and that's what makes the combat their willingness to come in here and give you this kind of a show. I salute them. White Tail, baby! DSC, DSC, and DSC! Let's go! Saw the Hall of Famers, our owner, Mike Vasquez, our matchmaker, Mel Valenzuela, congratulate the new champion. There is the Hall of Famer, got a 5,000. The heavyweight belt is about to go to DJ to make an official big vote. Ladies and gentlemen, Tampa. One more round of applause for these two warriors tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the sixth round, prior to the seventh, Bobby Wambacher has called a stop to this contest. Declaring your winner by TKO by a Dr. Stoppage. And the new Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by our winner and new champion, and it's a damn good thing I wore red, DJ Linderman. Congratulations, an absolute war. How does it feel to have that bell on your shoulder? Oh my God. I'm a six-time world champion in MMA, and this is the most prestigious bell that I put on my shoulder yet. And I'm going to defend it for all you people out here. I'm gonna take it and defend it to everyone they put in front of me. Give me one man next, and that's Donald 5000 himself!
Get up here, big boy! We have a championship call out down to 5,000. The father and the originator of BYB and the Trigon, Donna. You've been called out. It's been a while since you stepped foot. I think it's fitting that you step foot in your own invention, the Trigon. Of course, absolutely. You know, the last time that he called me out, it was inside the round, and they cut the mic off. Good thing for him. Since my suspension, seem like guys like this have grown a pair. I know you just won the title, so I'm gonna give you a chance to recant that. Don't get up here and call out Donna 5000 and make the biggest mistake of your career. Let's do it! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a heavyweight championship fight. DJ Linderman, our new champion, and the return of Donna 5000. Hey, let me tell you guys something. Tampa, the great fans of Tampa, I was supposed to come out here and put on a clinic tonight. I put that boot around your waist and I'll take it off you. Listen, nobody on the planet do it bigger than that. I promise you, if this suspension get lifted, I'm gonna take this title and I'm gonna retire the same night. Mel Valenzuela, Dada 5000 said, and I quote, I just put that belt around your waist, and very soon, I'll take it right back off. <laughs> Our main event is coming up next. Our main event is coming right up, ladies and gentlemen.
The world of combat sports has lost one of the most ferocious finishers of all time. Anthony Johnson was rumble inside the cage, possessor of power feared by all, the owner of some of the sport's most memorable highlight reel knockouts. Outside of combat, he was known as AJ, a gentleman extraordinaire with a smile that could instantaneously light up a room. AJ was loyal, always humble, always honorable. Anthony Rumble Johnson, my friend, you're gone way too soon at the tender age of 38. I love you, AJ. Rest in peace. Goldie, so well said. Hard to think about what to say next, Claudia, after that moving tribute so well written and, and read by Goldie. Rumble Johnson, only 38 years old, 23 wins, 17 by knockout. Got the nickname Rumble because of the one-punch power. A tremendous competitor gone way too soon, only 38 years old. As Goldie said so eloquently a moment ago, the world of combat sports will forever miss Rumble Johnson. Your thoughts and impressions on his great career? I echo uh, Goldie's words um, specifically when referring to his smile. And when we talk about smiles, it was a smile inside, outside. It didn't matter where he was in, uh, what kind of cage he was at. There was always that smile that would follow a good handshake and a brotherly love. He will be sorely missed. Like it, Goldie said it best, gone too soon. So we should turn the page after the DJ Litterman emotional win over Tony Lopez to retain the heavyweight crown here in BYB. It's Des Green. We didn't get to see him at BYB 11 in Doral near Miami. His opponent injured. Some maybe suspect circumstances that happened backstage before the final fight. That was the main event. Scott McHugh, British fighter, is here to take on Des Green who we know is a powerful puncher, a tremendous athlete, and Des Green goes for a big fight and the big title here tonight in Tampa. Finally, Claudia, the wait is over. We get to see Des Green compete. And Des Green said something very important that um, he gets motivated based on the level of opponent that he's facing. And not taking anything away from uh, Gabriel Fryer, but he understands that McHugh could be a bigger threat, a bigger challenge. And he's absolutely ready to take on this challenge because, like he said, that belt is mine. I am taking the Police Gazette belt home. I have the place for it, and I know exactly where it's going to go. So there's uh, many motivations for Desmond Green to take a W tonight. Des Green, tremendous college wrestler at Buffalo and All-American before he got going with UFC. Had a great record there. Now. We've seen him a few times mm -hmm. in action. Yes, he missed BYB 11 at Doral, but we know what he's capable of doing. This is a tremendous fighter, and now he's on center stage again, in the Trigon again, with a chance to prove his point that he's the best in the world. The question is, does he answer the call tonight? Is he ready? Well, he said that every fight he gets more comfortable with the smallest surface in combat sports. The first fight was always a challenge because he didn't really know what to do and how to do it. Now he's three fights in, he's ready, and moreover, he's already proven what he can do in other leagues. Now it's time to make his mark in BYB. Middleweight, title fight, Scott McHugh, Des Green, head to head. This will be fun to watch. We can't wait to see the finale of BYB 13 here in Tampa. Time now for the tale of the tape. Dave Claudia, thank you very much. Main event has come upon us for the title. Desmond the Predator Green, Scott McHugh, tail of the tape, Magic Man. 33 years old for Green. McHugh at 30 years old. He's got a one inch reach disadvantage. Same height at 5'10, same weight. They both weighed 155. This should be a good one, guys. Who will leave as the middleweight champion? Will it be Desmond Green or Scott McHugh? Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the main event of the evening. Seven three-minute rounds for the Police Gazette Diamond 155-pound championship and the BYB middleweight championship.
Nation. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the Trigon, Scott McHugh. with the Black Zillions. Desmond said he was so starstruck, he didn't say anything that entire practice. He said, AJ gave me his number. He took me under his wing. He was a big brother. I fight for him. I fight for Jamaica. I fight for the belt. I just saw Jason Jackson, fellow Jamaican, great fighter as well. Also a teammate of Rumble's. Everybody's got a heavy heart. Everybody wants to win it for Rumble. They all miss him. They all love him. They all looked up to him. But this is Desmond's moment, one that he's had to wait for, and one that he looks to take advantage of. And you know, the goal that he said he saw that police gazette belt, and he said, that's mine. Yep. And I'm gonna give it to my mother as soon as I win it tonight. He said, I sent pictures to Mom Chevella right away, Goldie. She's gonna get the real thing as soon as I take this home. Big Mo with the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Presented by Pink Cherries, live on the stadium app. Seven three minute rounds for the Police Gazette Diamond 155 pound world championship and the BYB middleweight championship. So, Tampa. I need you all to get up out of your seats, raise your drinks high, and get wild! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands 
five feet, ten inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He comes to us with a bare knuckle record of eight wins, three losses, and he fights out of Leeds, England, introducing the three-time BKB champion, the one, the only, Scott And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated bare knuckle record of two victories, no defeats. And he fights out of Miami, Florida, USA. Introducing Desmond. Our referee in charge, Bill Clancy. Reader. All right, gentlemen, with the rules in the back, I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times, and gentlemen, you must obey my commands. Now, both your trunks are fine. I want all your punches above the line. Touch gloves now, touch hands. Good luck, God bless. Clear the ring. Desmond Green Scott McHugh. Middleweight belt to the winner. Police Gazette diamond Puppies. belt to the winner. Puppies. Our Go main line. event of the evening. On my command, gentlemen. Game face Fight. is on. Here we go. Southpaw Desmond Green, red trunks, red wraps. The Brit in the blue. Watch the fingers up top, gentlemen. Eight and three as a professional bare knuckle boxer. Desmond Green is two and off. Oh. Clinch work by Desmond Green. Now, that is a difference between BKB and BYB rules. Nice jab there by Desmond Green on the end. You can utilize the clinch more in our BYB, Benny. Yeah, but you can see how McHugh, I mean, he stay, plants himself right there. He just moves the waist from side to side, but he's in a perfect position to throw if he wants to. He said he's a slow starter, so don't expect too much out of him at the beginning. You have to be careful with that because of the clinch that's allowed in this, in, in this version of bare knuckle fighting. Keeping that low waistline like that, if they're changing that look, he can wind up in that tight plum. That there's Green likes to use nice feint there by Green as he can initiate. See that what he does? He gets that feint and, and, and McHugh will duck down, change levels, and Green will can take advantage of that by grabbing him behind the head. And Desmond is a wrestler at heart, but he is obviously now a talented mixed martial artist and looking to become a bare knuckle champion. Fingers up top against who is already a bare knuckle champion from Britain in Scott McHugh. Hey, Green is fighting a really smart fight. He is. And you know, he's got to be the biggest 155 pounder you'll ever see. I mean, no, those MMA got wrestler guys know, that, know how to cut weight. They do indeed. And he is working that jab beautifully. He's got that backhand right along. Yeah, he's got... There you go! I tell you, McHugh will trying to get close, but when McHugh gets close, Green does a great job of, of putting his hand behind his neck and then pulling him down. And so he's keeping... McHugh's forced to fight on the outside. And I tell you, Green's been really crafty on the outside with that lead hand and those sharp left, those sharp left crosses. I mean, look at the eyes. The eyes of Desmond Green are unbelievable. They're like the size of the moon. Yeah, he's super concentrated, super focused. Some swelling on the left eye. 25 and 8 pro MMA record for Desmond Green, who landed a sneaky jab from the right hand to the southpaw stance there. And that happened when Paul talked about it. He dipped down to another level, and that set it up perfectly with that, that short right hand. I'll be honest, I don't know if McHugh has figured out how to close the gap other than you know, getting down low. And, and in this sport, it's different from BKB. You get down low, you're going to wind up with your hand behind your neck. Especially on South Pole, like, there's Green. His lead hand can easily reach behind your neck quickly. And when they clinch, it's Desmond Green that's a stronger fighter. Yep. Good, job, Good round for Des Green. The corner of the Predator. And Desmond just kicked the, the, the stool out of there. That man he's talking to, fellow Jamaican, his best friend. The ass kicking.
Time Machine, Jason Jackson. Also a tremendously talented mixed martial artist. Also someone who was mentored by the late Anthony Rubio. That's what I'm asking. Same work. So is he showing him a video right there? Johnny is the key. The like they're, they're doing the NFL thing on, on the iPhone instead of the iPad. The <laughs> Technology, man. You got that right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, McHugh did tell us he's a slow starter. So that was definitely a slow start for that first round. Yeah, it looks like he never got started. I mean, he was having yeah, trouble watch finding the fingers his lane. Please, okay? And, I don't uh, want to get any eye pokes, okay? Look like you had even more trouble with the with the reset. Round number two, the Southpaw Desmond Green in the red, the Brit in the blue, Scott McHugh. Trains with Ricardo Franco, also a DKB world champion. Green looking to leave with the belt. Look at 
Polly. See when he gets down real low. Watch how wide his feet are. He cannot get in there with a good punch. The feet are too far apart. Look at that. Yeah, he can't close the gap. And the athleticism of Desmond Green is undeniable. And he's not trying to fake his way in. He's trying to just get low and rush his way in. And it's just oh, no, 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 doing Green a favor. Now it's a big punch there. And Green can easily see the uppercut. Oh, oh, They're right there in front of him. He's going to throw it. McHugh's right eye is really bothering him. And Mary Uncle were one punch away, though. Work, 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 work the guy. Uh, now with Desgrave. Right, good, good, good. Yeah. Maybe two, maybe three or four. Yeah. yeah good point, Paul. Good job, job, yeah. good job. Good job. Good job. Not gonna get rid good of Green in one shot. Work the guy, work Watch it. the fingers. Well, well, he can't even get close enough to do that. Oh, His MMA skills. And he's just too strong. He's just too strong. And from the outside, McHugh's not at range with an ideal range. was a better fighter because he was a completely smarter fighter and the discipline to execute the game plan and never let go of that game plan. I mean, just, I'm surprised at how easily he won this fight. I mean, I expected a competitive fight. I was excited for this main event. I mean, very, very impressive. And there was nothing that McHugh could do that, that again, Desmond had an answer for. If he wanted to go up, he showed his strength. If he wanted to drop down, he showed his precision. And if he wanted to move away, he could reach him because he had the superior hand speed. But that last puck, tight plum uppercut, boom. End of the night. And, and Goldie, you know, you mentioned uh, Des Green's corner. You know, you, you know you're know, you more familiar with them. Hey, guys, there. I mean, you got to give props to the Green corner as well because all that whole team, including Green, came up with this, a, a beautiful game plan, executed perfectly. They kept on focus in the corner. And, I mean, he lo he won every second of this fight. It wasn't – It was, look at this replay here. Again, the tie plum at close range, and there's that uppercut. He couldn't get away from it there. And, it's, I mean, it's – Again, he dominated the fight. You gotta give props all around to this whole team. No question about it. Domingo, the KO Zone, the Young Tigers Foundation, and his teammate with the Black Zillions, now Sanford MMA. The ass kicking machine, Jason Jackson. Mom in attendance. She's gonna get the diamonds from her son Desmond. Mom Chevella here. Desmond Green is your BYB middleweight champion. And he has taken home that beautiful belt full of diamonds. I told you guys, we don't all get hit. That's true. We're going to find it out. And that police gazette belt, by the way, Mike, 20 pounds. Wow. So let's hope his mother can go ahead and carry that. <laughs> You put that over your shoulder, you yeah. separated if you don't throw it off. Father of four, one gets to experience firsthand the joy of championship for daddy. I, I tell you what, we may have just seen probably the most perfect fight I've ever seen with, you know, that witness in Bear Nuggets. And, and that screen's getting better every fight. Yes. You know, I mean, this is, this is even, I, I've been impressed with him when I've seen him, but this is big. This was an, an excellent, excellent performance where he showed, you know, just a, a an intelligence beyond what I expected. And, and, and an ability, obviously, you know, no, man, uh, his no, experience man, and discipline in his ability to execute the game plan. But the game plan was so good that he was executing, and you needed the ability to execute that kind of game plan. Great footwork, great decision making, really smart fight. Again, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about how impressed I am. And you know, we were asking for rivalries, because we need rivalries to make the fight. But this was so one-sided, it was unbelievable. He won, like you said, probably every second of the fight.
He has fought the top no, no, no. of the food chain his entire amateur I know you and professional I know. career, and it all culminates in a huge yeah, yeah, yeah. win tonight. To make it official, here is Big Bob. No, I'm not to be embarrassed about it. To be embarrassed. Ladies and gentlemen, no, no, man, we're not a referee Bill Clancy calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 45 seconds of the third round, declaring your winner by knockout and the new BYB middleweight champion and the Police Gazette Diamond middleweight champion, Desmond the Predator. show sportsmanship and class from Scott McHugh. Mama's getting the diamonds. Here's Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by our winner and his family, Desmond the Predator Green. You know what? I'll go to mom first. Mom, how does it feel to see your son be a champion like that? Awesome. This day has been coming since he's been in the league and I'm just happy that he's here and I couldn't be more proud of him. It's nerve-wracking. I'm getting too old for this, but bring it on. Well, I can say this. Your son was dominant tonight. Desmond, if there was a word to use, patient, clean, calculated, you are a true champion, Desmond. How do you feel? Okay, hold on. First, I've been dying to say this. Oh, man. I don't want to cry. Two weeks ago, October 19th, my brother went to the hospital. He was already diagnosed with ALS. October 19th, he went to the hospital. October 29th, he died. For those 10 days, my mom would tell you, I was depressed. I lost 10 pounds. I wasn't eating. I literally, I, I, I was in a dark place. And fighting is the only thing that kept me going. And I, I dedicate this fight to you, James Brown. I told you I was going to win. I know your wife watched your home. I love you, bro. Rest in peace. And to your son, James Jr., I got you for life. OK, now the fight. Got that over with. I love you, James. Man, I, I, I just had so much going into this fight, you know. I got a lot to prove. And, you know, I'm not even done yet. Hats off to Scott. Scott was a warrior. When I tell you I lost sleep over him, I lost sleep, but it motivated me. Just motivated me. Well, congratulations, Desmond. Now, on to the next. As we say, are we anticipating you defending these new, these new belts pretty quickly? So listen, I want to defend this belt. Whoever's got the belt at the next weight class up, what is it, 65? I want them. I want to be the double champ for BYB. Everybody's doing the double champ. Yo, Mike, let me be the double champ. Line it up, whoever it is, double champ it up. And then I want to go over to BKB take their belt from whoever got it over there. And uh, yeah, man, I got BYB tattooed on me for life. We got BYB tattooed on you. You got BYB around your waist. James is proud of you, Desmond. One more time for your new champion, Desmond, the Predator Green. Just a perfectly executed game plan from Desmond, the Predator Green, a heavy heart for a longtime teammate, a mentor, and a family member as well. Yeah, man, it, uh, you really battled a lot of, you know, a lot of things that could de derail the mentality of a different fighter with less experience, a less focused fighter. But not only did it not break his focus, he made it motivate him. He let it motivate him, and Thank really the much. best Thank performance you. of his bare knuckle career thus far. I mean, this was an excellent performance and a well-deserved championship here at BYB. A, a, a masterpiece, to say the least. Yeah, I think, you know, the fighting spirit of AJ was in. Right? Right? And, and, you know, to me, this was a perfect fight. I've never seen a better executed bare knuckle fight than what you just witnessed tonight. This was absolutely amazing. He executed the plan perfectly. He negated a world-class bare knuckle fighter that has had a very impressive career. But Desmond made him look like, like an amateur. I mean, he literally won every second of the fight. And this is a man in Scott McHugh who was very humble in defeat, who was very complimentary of the opponent who just took the belt. And more importantly, a man who has rarely been stopped, if ever been stopped, other than by a cut, Paulie. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was. This is a guy who hangs tough. He was a guy who told us he liked getting hit. Yeah. Yep. Well, Daz hit him so much that he actually didn't want it anymore. And I, I quite, you always question when somebody tells you they like getting hit because, especially in bare knuckle, it's even more uncomfortable. He didn't like getting hit after a while. In fact, not he didn't like it. He tried to motivate himself. He tried to come aggressive, but Dez remained composed. And then that's the beauty again. We're, we're shrinking the world. Yeah. We're bringing people across the pond. We're, we're br tell, bring us your best. We're going to give you our best. We just saw it tonight. We, we saw perfection inside the Trigon, and we have a middleweight champion. Rhino, his name is Desmond the Predator Green. And it was worth the wait to see Des Green in action tonight. Tremendous fight with McHugh from Great Britain. And Claudia, it's the knockout of the night for good reason. I thought Benny and Polly and Goldie just hit the nail on the head. The strategy that Des Green put together with his team and his camp to get ready for the moment to knock out Scott McHugh. The tie plum played perfectly into what he wanted to do. And in the end, it's the KO of the night. It was the discipline, it was the strategy, it was um, the work behind that fight plan. Because just like uh, Paulie mentioned, he dominated from the first bell to the last minute where uh, the ref decided to stop the action. But it's the discipline behind that fight plan that actually makes this type of fight a total success. It is the BYB 13 knockout of the night. And yes. look, Claudia, give Scott McHugh a lot of credit. <laughs> he got up over and over again. Tremendous toughness for the battler from Britain, but in the end, Des Green was just too much. He went down four times in the second round and three times in the third before the ref stopped the action. So I give him all the credit, but again, it's that discipline behind a fight plan. Back in a moment here, BYB 13 in Tampa from the state fairgrounds with a fight of the night. Here's a hit, also middleweight division. For now, the belt belongs to Desmond Green. The Predator is the middleweight champion of BYB. que te dejaste a su madre y dona de pecho me zumbé si quieres te hago un bebé te traigo la plan B uh. mami que rica tú te vas
In three weeks, BYB Extreme makes history, bringing bare knuckle fighting to the state of South Carolina for the very first time. Our main event, a battle of unbeatens for the interim BYB Super Middleweight Championship. Laurent T. Smash Nelson colliding with Sam the Caveman Liera. That's Friday, December 9th from the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Get your tickets at BYBTickets.com. All right, plenty of time to recap the fight of the night. And as we said, the hit before the break, it's the middleweights again. And Bobar Konikov was tremendous tonight, head-to-head -head with Isaac Freeman, both representing their countries. Such emotion, certainly, for Konikov with Ukraine on his mind. He was awesome tonight. Not just Ukraine, his wife, ex-wife, and his child. And there was a motivation that goes beyond the Trigon. And he wanted to make this the opportunity to showcase his skill, but moreover, making his dream come true. Take the first win as he represents a country that's going through political and social turmoil. The fight of the night, no question about that from the middleweights. Fun to watch. This, Claudia, was an emotional evening at BYB 13. We paid tribute, as Goldie so eloquently said, to Rumble Johnson. Konikov talking about his native Ukraine. Des Green about a fallen family member. Such emotion, to be sure. But also great bare knuckle boxing. Quite a night in Tampa. Outstanding. And Monica Medina showing once again that she has all the skills. And obviously, she takes that title to a completely different level, looking for a rematch against Patti Juarez. And as we're saying goodbye, the new addition to BYB family, uh, Julio coming all the way from Sonora and showing the Mexican style in the Mighty Trigon. He was amazing, Julio Tenori. What a fighter for Mike Vasquez, Dada 5000, Mel Valenzuela, and the entire broadcasting crew, Mike Goldberg, Polly Malinaji, Benny Ricardo, Claudia Trejos, ring announcer Big Mo, who was amazing as always. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Tampa, Florida. And BYB 13 had everything. Tremendous heavyweights. We had two belts awarded to Green and to Linderman. Thanks for watching BYB 13. We'll see you in Rock Hill, South Carolina on December 9th for BYB 14.